Debbie V has said, Shara, just a woman with the magical touch. I'm like, burn the fire, you know I'm just too much. I want to treat my hair in the heat of the night. Romance to the moon, if your time is right. Get your back right, but also be crack. He says, I'm the kind of girl that he could never forget. She is the lady we salute to be the man in my life. You got to be my only. I'll always hold you secure and my arms real tight. Squeeze you real good till you feel just right. I have a heart of gold I want to share with you and give you the type of loving that you've never been through. And if you date where we're coming from, say yeah. Production, production, production. We'll always get paid, paid, paid. We'll take the wacky song, song and make song. it better. better, better Remember better, better. to let us into your skin, skin, cause then you'll begin skin, to skin, master skin. rhyming, rhyming, rhyming. Criminal minded, you've been blinded. Looking for a style like mine, you can't find it. They are the audience, I am the lyricist. Sometimes the truck is on the side, gotta hear this page. A rage, yet I'm not in a cage. Free as a bird to fly about on stage. Ain't here for no fun and just to say a little something. Your suckers don't like me cause they're all about nothing. However, I'm really fascinating to the letter. My all around performance gets better and better. My English grammar comes down like a hammer. You're kissing other people's I write and produce myself Just as fast, keep my hair like this Got no time for Jerry Curls Attracting only women, got no time for little girls Cause girls look so good But their brain is not ready I don't know I'd rather talk to a woman Cause her mind is so steady So here we go I'm not a musical maniac, a b-boy fanatic I'm simply made use of what was up to in the attic I've listened to these issues back when I was a kid But I bust more shots than they ever did. I mean, this is not the best of KRS, it's just a section. But how many times must I point you in the right direction? You need protection when I'm on the mic because my mouth is like a nine millimeter with height. You're a king, I'm a teacher, you're a people, I'm a scholar. If this was a class, well, it would go right in the drama. The kings lose crowns, the teachers stay intelligent. Talking big words on the mic is still irrelevant, except when you're not. College material, wake up every morning to your lucky charm cereal. I won't go deeper in the subject cause that gets me bored It's a shame to know some entries on the mic are fraud Saying sounds like this, to create a dick But if you listen to you listen, I am a musician Rapping on the mic like this to me is fine Cause if I really wanna battle, I will pull out a knife You can see, this got the rock and I am mentally blinded In other words, we're both criminal minded Hey, 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 what's up, people? Welcome to uh, the G. Lou Show Flashback Fridays. And uh, tonight, 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 man, we got a very, very special guest, the legendary, legendary first female of hip-hop, the OG, MC Shaw Rock, man, and she is now in the green room. Let me get some things established. Let me do this right here. I'm going to bring in my co-host in one minute and bring in Shaw Rock. She's in the green room. I want to introduce her properly. But I want to let everybody know this is a very, very, very special episode tonight of Flashback Fridays. We have a legend in the house, and I want everybody to come in and give a couple people a few more minutes to get in here. And we're going to bring her in shortly right after this right here. 
But once again, we have the legendary MC Shaw Rock Funky Funky Four Plus One and all that right there. This is the G Lu Show Flashback Fridays. I'm gonna do it like this right here, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the G. Lou Show Flashback Fridays. I am G. Lou. Let me bring in my co-host before we get started, the lovely Miss Queen Jean, my co-host. Queen, what's up, Queen? What's going on, G. Lou? Hey, I'm excited tonight. I'm excited. We got a great show lined up, man. I'm just excited tonight. I just don't even know what to say. We got a legend in the house, as you <laughs> already know. We represent for the females tonight, so I had to bring you in so I can introduce you, and then you can introduce our lovely guest. Right on. Okay. We're going to bring Queen MC Shayrock, the mother of the mic. The Shawrock, I'm sorry, Miss Shawrock. The mother of the mic, the first prolific female rapper, period. Come on out the green room, period. Queen, and and let's get period. this knowledge going for those who are <laughs> not familiar with you. <laughs> Ow. The Queen. The Queen Shawrock. Hey, Family. Welcome hey, to Queen. Our how show. you doing? Hi, G. Lou. How you uh, doing? Hey, I'm hey, good. hey. Excited. We're excited. Can you hear this excitement <laughs> in our voice? <laughs> well, listen, I'm excited. Anytime I do an interview and have to, you know, and not have to, but anytime, you know, I have the, uh, the opportunity to enlighten, you know, many, you know, I'm all for that, you know, to just let people know exactly who I am and, and what I have you know, did to the coach and the coach in general. You know, I, I, I just love hip-hop to this day, so I'm always, you know, able and want to be able to enlighten people on who I am and what I brought to the culture. Wow. And let me add wow. this as well. You are very yes, beautiful. Ma'am. You are a very beautiful queen. Beautiful. Girl, Girl look. look. So I want to <laughs> thank you. Listen, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, you know what? 
I don't know. I, I think, you know, just, just in general, you know, just, just still listen to hip hop music, you know, um, you know, from old school to new school. I listen to things that's out there now, you know, kept, keep abreast on what's going on. And I think just, just the energy of the music and the culture is what, what keeps me young and hard, hard. All of the other stuff, you know, is good. I appreciate it. But I, I think just living, you know, just hearing the beats, the songs, the music, you know, um, it, that that's just what keeps me young at heart, you know. And, yeah, and, and it may sound funny, but it's the truth, though. I'm, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Well, check this out right here, um, Shaw Rock. Again, um, honored, honored. It's just an honor to have you here tonight. I just want to thank you first and foremost before we get started. I want to thank yes. you. I want to thank uh, BTP Media, <laughs> uh, the homie Def Kwan made it happen, and uh, everybody involved with tonight's show. And um, I just uh, again, first we're gonna talk about hip hop. You, you you're very you're being very humble right now. You just said you appreciate everything about the culture and hip hop. But let's keep it right. real. You are hip hop. You started hip hop. Like even me, I know you go way back. You know, um, I'm a little younger, yeah. you know, than you and all that. But you know, I go back to Beat Street and all that. My favorite, one of my favorite movies, definitely hip hop. Yeah, but you and all know, that. But look, you were in this movie. I'm way before Beat Street. Sorry. I'm way before I know Beat that. Street. I know though. that. Mm-hmm. I know that. I know that. Right. Queen, I know let, that. Let, let me, me tell let y'all. Let me tell y'all. Okay, let me tell okay. y'all. Let me tell y'all. For your audience that that that's listening or may listen, you know, twenty and thirty and ten years from now. Uh-huh. Not only am I the first female MC of hip hop culture, but I'm a founding member of hip hop culture. And let me explain right. it to you how that came about. In 1976, you know, I was going to, uh, I was just graduating out of junior high school and was going to high school. And, um, but right before that, during the summertime, I used to travel around the Bronx, you know, and go to uh, like park jams that was outside in the Bronx. And so even though some of the elements, were beginning to come together. We weren't calling it hip hop at the time. So of course you had your B girls and your B your B boys, and you had the music out there. But I started out in 1976 as a B girl. So I used to travel around. And for your audience that don't know, the B girl for us back then is called is it's like a break dancer, but we didn't call it break dancer. It was only into the 80s that they gave it the mm-hmm. name of break dancers, but we used to call B girls and B boys, like break, break, um, you know, break girls and break boys. But you were mm-hmm. a B girl. And a B girl was anything that, I mean, anyone or a B boy was anyone that would travel around to the different um, parts of New York, especially in the Bronx, that would play those break beats. Now, even though you may have had, you know, like your, your disco DJs that was out there and they were playing like most of the songs that you would hear on the radio during, you know, like um, 76 or 77, it was only certain DJs that would play the break beat that would allow you to come out and break, you know, and, and, and break dance would be that B-girl. And so this is what the B-girl and B-boy would travel around to hear those break beats because disco people wouldn't allow us you know, to even be, they didn't understand what we were doing. They thought it was childish. They thought it was, you know, um, kiddish or whatever. But this is what we used to do to go around, you know, to, um, you know, to dance. And, and, and for me, it was 1976. But that following year, in 1977, at the end of 77, was when I, you know, joined, I had began to start, um, well, I went to audition for, you know, uh, uh, an MC that was going to be a part of, of a group that was called the Brothers Disco. Now, the Brothers Disco was like the organization, you know, that was really trying to get ready to form the Funky Four, but we weren't yet formed as the Funky Four yet. So, like, at the end of the, the, uh, the end of 77, I, I auditioned to become an MC. Now, in 78, for your audience that don't know the history, I am a female. Yes, I am. But I'm also a founding member because 78 was the key year that brought in a lot of the things that y'all may, may hear or may see now. 78 was the year that we had begun to start calling ourselves MCs, not the E-M-C-E-E, but just the M M C MCs, right? You know, right. what, Mary Cow, whatever, MCs, right. that spelling. So in 78 was the, was the pivotal year that things had begun to start coming together. Now, like, when I say to your audience and I say to y'all that I was, I am also a founding member of the culture, not only as a female in 78, I became the first female MC, right? 
but but right. that was the end of 77. But I became also the first female MC that was a part of an all-male group. So now what we have did is that we have created like a mold where different people in different groups were beginning to form like at the end of, 80, uh, end of 78, but they were trying to have a female that can deal with me. Not just a female, but they also were having groups like you may, you may have Nellie Mel, um, and y'all know them as uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. When they started yes. off, they started off before the Funky Four. They were only three MCs, which was Millie Mel, his brother, Creo, and then it was um, Keith Cowboy, which, you know, um, he passed away. They were just they were just the mellow MCs in, in, 70, in um, early 78. It was just three of them. It wasn't until Raheem, which y'all may know him now for being a part of the, funk, uh, of the Furious Five, he came yeah. over to to my group, my group, which it was only three of us at that time. When he came over in early '78, that's when we became the original Funky Four, because y'all know me as the Funky Four plus one, but I'm a part of the right. original Funky Four, which I started. I, I am a founding member of the Funky Four. So now we have four people, right? Me, four MCs. When we had begun to start having four MCs, it wasn't until late, I think like 78, the beginning of 79, when Mel, Mel and them became, you know, the the, uh, the four MCs. Then Raheem left, right, and, and but, but right. in 79. So, so now we got four MCs. So now groups were coming up. They were even adding four MCs or they were adding a female, M- female to try to have the same formula as Sha Rock. So now I'm as the funky four with a girl. So now only did we create the the um, the ambiance of the uh, of of having four MCs, right? Because groups were forming. They weren't having three MCs. They were either four MCs or five MCs. But they also added a girl. So we started that that cycle of of them adding a girl. Not only that, in '78, what y'all may see now is mixed is mixtape era. I was a part of the era that created the cassette tape era. So now everything that y'all see in the mixtape eras, we were already doing it in in, in the 70s and 78, but it was cassette tapes because how they sell it out their their trunk of the cars on the street corners or in stores, they were selling cassette tapes of the Funky Four and the Furious Four and the Furious Four in stores. So we had already created that era even before the mixtape era era came out where you can go and, and, and hear the songs of the clubs, of the parties, with the songs being mixed in, played together. They were selling them, you know, um, trading them, you know, in schools. They were selling them on the corners across from the schools, and they were selling them in, um, you know, like in the record stores. Mixtape, you know, right. um, well, cassette tapes, but now y'all call them mixtapes. Also, when you right. talk about um, the mic stands, you know, having the mic stands, you know, being up there rhyming and all that stuff to the mic stands, we created, we created that. Having an echo chamber behind our voice. That is what I'm known for. When I talk about being like a founding member of the culture, when you hear DMC and you and, and he said, well, you know, Shah Rock inspired me and you, you can hear it online. It's not what I say, it's what he say. When you hear DMC from Run DMC say, well, when I heard um, Shah Rock on the echo chamber, you know, this is one of the things that prompt me to, um, you know, prompt us to want to do the tough, Tougher Than Leather album and have Jam Master J put the echo behind my voice. So that's what I was mm. known for, the echo chamber. Whenever I rhyme, it will always be like an echo or reverb, I guess you'll call it the reverb, on the last sentence right. of my rhyme or last sentence of the words that I'm saying, you know, in a sentence of a rhyme. So when you talk right. about graffiti and you're talking about like a lot of people say, y'all, I could talk. So I'm just trying to bring, bring you know, go just ahead, put everything ahead, out there for y'all to ask. So when you talk you about graffiti on clothing and all of that stuff, a lot of people nowadays, they say, okay, well, graffiti is not a part of, of hip-hop culture, but to me it is. Because the guy who is was the king of the flyer was a graffiti artist first that used to tag trains in New York City. But we were the first to enlist them to come over, you know, to be, make the first flyers for her, us, which is his name is Buddy S. White. He's the king of the flyers that would do crazy flyers, but he started with us. When we when I, when we're talking about being a founding member, when you hear people like um, a 45 Key Mark who did uh, Jay Z's Hard Not Life, or he made mm-hmm. some of Queen Latifah's Queen biggest Latifah. hits, he right, right he was my record boy. He was my record boy. He used to pass the records to my DJ Breakout for us to rhyme. So he came out of our camp. So it's a lot of things mm. that you know a lot of people don't know. You know that went down. You know even far as 
you know, the different things that were going on in the streets at the time. I was a part of the era that set that set the standard for what hip hop right. was. In New York City, I play, I have over like 500 flyers, which means that and, and we're talking about the inside of New York City, not even talk about outside of New York or, or in New York City or the parks that I played, which meaning that I, I played at every place, at every um, hip hop, you know, venue that you could even make, uh, that you could even think of that before any other female had, right, or any other male had. I'm the first female to ever be to, to play in the Audubon Ballroom in '78 when Malcolm X got killed with um, wow. I'm sorry got assassinated with with the, wow. you know and with the Funky Four in '78 right. we have flyers to prove it now your audience may not know that so when they hear you know the different women on say well this woman is first and this woman is first they talk about the '80s era. They don't know about the 70s era. They don't know that Shaw mm-hmm. Rock was on the front line. The only thing that they, most of them know about me is that, one, once again, I was the plus <laughs> one. But right, right. I'm way before the plus one. I'm, I'm on the street. I'm on the front line when this whole, line. all the elements was kicking off. I was there. And this is why the streets so vouch. A lot of people wonder, they said, okay, with Shaw Rock, you know, what happened? What happened? Why you never talk? Why you never say nothing about it? We don't know. We was wondering where you at. Some people could have, I, I heard one person said, well, maybe she's on drugs someplace or she's, you know, this and that. Because when they don't hear from you, they think you're doing bad. But it wasn't that. Right. It wasn't until, you know, I had I got married like in the 80s. So I traveled around the world, you know, because uh, my husband was in, in the military. So I traveled around. I always felt like people knew because the information was out there. I always felt like people knew who I was, so I didn't have to explain. But it wasn't until, like, I think it was 1999 or something like that, that I had begun to start seeing people flip the story. Because now you got your museums coming up. you got people buying artifacts. And everybody wants to display you and talk about the information from back in the days. But nobody's talking about Shah because... They don't really know who I am. They only know me from the from the streets of being out there. And if they wasn't out there, they 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 still don't know who I am. So you had a lot of people that were going around and and and, and saying that they were first and they was this and that and this until I came back from Germany and I found out that this was going on. So I shut everybody down because they knew I had to. I had to. You know why? Right. Because no one, no one was out there doing what I was doing and, and I say this humble to your guests and, and I and to whoever is listening. Y'all have to understand when we're talking about history and we're talking about people changing the narrative, I have a problem with that. Because everything that hip hop was about and all the stuff that you may see now, I did it already. I had mm-hmm. I had did it. I had followers. I had thousands of followers before Twitter had that blue bird. And I say that on every interview because I want people to understand what Shah Rock had did for the culture. It wasn't just New York City. It was it was anybody, you know, that I touched from, from the Curtis Blow to the DMCs to the Fat Joe. You you hear Fat Joe say that I was 99% better than, you know, most of the guys that was out there. Now, that was a gift and a curse, but he said that. A lot of people got met. A lot of dudes may have felt offended by that, but that was the truth. That was the truth. Right. And so when it's all said and done, you know, I was the one to help push as, as far as a female, not just a female, but a founding member to help push the culture forward. I was the one who, as a female, to help the style, the rhyming style of, of not just um, not just 16 bars. I was the one, a part of, you know, the first battles. The battles didn't start in 80. The Furious Five and the Funky Four used to battle all the time. We started the battle era. I was a part of the battle era. I was I was the one who who um, along with, with with my group to to and, and it's different uh, to change the way that MCs were. You know, not not rapping, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but the passing of the mic to anybody. Well, you see, when people pass the mic, and we always had a cadence, or when we came in and we passed the mic to our next person, but we did it in the cadence style. I, as a female and a founder member of the hip hop right. culture, and as a founder member of the MCs, was the one who started the cadence along with the Funky Four and the Furious Five of how we passed the mic to to our our uh, you know members that was a part of them, you know, a part of you know rhyming or whatever. So I was a part of all of that. But your audience right. would know because people don't talk about it because they don't know. And if they do talk about it, it's only because they're taking, well, maybe have listened to the interviews. And, and take it as their own and hone it as their own. 
And, right, and, and right. one more one more thing before y'all start asking, and the problem that I have, with, and, and I've been telling all the media now, all these people that write the book or write these books, or all these professors and stuff that talk, if you're not mentioning Shy Rock and the Funky Four, you're not doing your history right. For you to not say or know that I'm the first female of MC uh, uh, of, of, of hip hop culture, what you're doing is you're doing a you're not you're doing a disservice to yourself because I'm gonna come out swinging because right. I could prove who I am. And for you to not write about it because you want to be safe and not offend anybody else, that's not safe for me because that's my history. That's what I did. So for any media person that's out there looking, and if y'all don't take the time to do uh, your job and y'all just want to get a book out there or y'all want to get a story out there, if y'all want to write about it, if you're not talking about me, you're not talking about hip-hop. If you're not talking mm. about the Furious Five and the Funky Four and you're going over straight into the 80s, you, know, you don't know hip-hop. You're just playing it safe. And I don't, I don't mess mm. with people like that because that means that you don't have the coach's best interest in hand by telling the true history of how it went down. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Mm. That part. That part. Yes, hey, sir. Uh, but, yes, sir. Stop rock. Check this and out. And I say that to you, any, you... anybody that I, I talk to. Right, right, and you you just gave him a whole lot right there, a whole lot. But check this out, we're we're speaking about like you just said, hip hop really taking off, or, or as people may know it outside of New York or maybe even the Bronx, like probably mm-hmm. early '80s, you know. But you go mm-hmm. back to the '70s with this shit. It's right. like wow, you know, right. even me, I grew right. up in Los Angeles, and I was I used to break dance, b boy, all that. But we wow. got that in the wow. early '80s. You go back to the right. '70s, saying you was I go a b girl. Break dancing in, in the seventy-six, 70s. right? That's right. crazy. But now there was Kept, B boys and B girls. B girls. I mean, B, well, I didn't see the B girls, but there was B boys. There was B boys that was out out there way before I. Some say it started in seventy-one, but I'm too young, so I can't travel right. around like that. But it was seventy-six is when I came came on the game, and so this is why you know, you know, I tell them. You know, when a person says, oh, Shaw Rock, I was out there with you or any other female, oh, no, the hell you wasn't because I was a B-girl. So that means that with you a B-girl, you going around, you see who's moving. So if there's another female out there rhyming, you're going to know who they are. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was a B-girl, right. because that would have been something for you to be able to say, yo, wow, that's that's cool. That's, that's what's going on. That's what's up. You know, and this is how I know who was out there and who wasn't because I was a B-girl and traveled around to different parts of the Bronx you know, to, 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 um, to hear those break beats. And let me also say in 79, I tell you that 78 was the pivotal year where hip hop had begun to start really taking form with all the elements that was coming into play. But 79 is also a crucial year too, because you may hear from a lot of people, well, this person had a record out, you know, in 75 and this, I mean, 79 and this person had, had a record out in 79, but I was the authentic female MC that was on the streets of New York, that was in the gulf of, of, of what was becoming the name hip-hop culture, that I got a record deal. So in 1979, I had a, I, w- I was the first female MC with a record deal. Of course, you had Lady B from Philadelphia, or you may have Angie, I mean, um, the sequence from North Carolina, mm-hmm. but they I think they recorded their song in 79, but it didn't come out to 80. And then you had the Sugar Hill Gang also in 79. The difference between me as opposed to them was that I helped create this culture. I didn't just come mm-hmm. into the game rhyming, you know, on a record. Mm-hmm. I helped create this culture. I was on the front line in the street. When we were building the culture. So I had became right. the, the first female MC with a record deal in 79. So I had my first record deal in 79 and unenjoyed records with the Funky Four. Right, right. And and, and, right. and that's incredible. That's incredible. Funky Four plus one. I mean, yeah. seven, you, you go back to the 70s. Look, check this out. Tell us in yeah. your in your words, right? Since you go back to the seventies with it, before the the people outside of New York and mainly the Bronx got got a hold of hip hop and it took over and everything, because you know we're, we're talking like eighties. I, I played Beat Street. A lot of people know you from that, but you go probably right, right. almost ten years prior to you exactly, in your words. Exactly. When, but check this out in your words. Since you started in the seventies. When did really hip hop, or, or, or as you know it, when you were a B girl and the B boys were out there, when did officially you can say hip hop really? You got introduced to hip hop and it became a thing where you were doing what you were doing in the break dancing and all that to, well, to be in well, the seventies. Well, yeah, okay, but seventy six was when I came in as a B girl. Seventy seven at the end of seventy seven when I was an MC. Seventy eight is the pivotal year because not only were I 
we were just in the Bronx, the original Funky Four, but we were traveling mm-hmm. all around. So we were taking it out of the Bronx to Connecticut, to, to Staten Island, you know what I'm saying, to different places. I even took it down to in 78 to North Carolina and as a B girl, but they looking at me like I'm crazy, you know, um, cause, cause I'm originally, I was born in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, but I left when I was okay. eight years old, but my mom sent, you know, me and my brothers and sis, my brother and my sisters back down every year out of New York city to get us out of New York city. They would send us back South. So I would go back South, you know, um, learn what I, I learned in New York and take it back down South. But in 78, they weren't ready. They looked at me like I was like was suffering from seizures right. or something like that when I started, of, you know. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. So they 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 they, <laughs> they didn't grasp it, you know, until probably like until records the records came out. But still, they only knew rhyming records. They didn't know the culture. So even when you had like um, Sugar Hill Gang, or you may have like Sequence or something like that. The Sugar Hill Gang was in Jersey, and then you had Se- Sequence in, in South Carolina. And when the, when the Sugar Hill Gang comes to uh, South Carolina and they perform it, they see the rap aspect, but they don't know the mm-hmm. culture aspect. They don't know the break dancing, the B girls, the DJs, the cutting and the mixing and stuff because they have not experienced that. They only experienced the record format. You, you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so now. Right. You know, in, in, in 78, late 79, we were still traveling around because we had a record, too. So we were going to Washington, you know, D.C. We were going to Connecticut. We was, we was traveling all around with our first record. Still, Washington, D.C. or outside New York didn't still get the B-boy and the B-girl aspect. And even Philly, I think maybe till around my 79. And the only reason why they, if they got it, it was only because you, you had people like that lived in Washington or Philly that would come up to the Bronx and be able to see the movement. So unless they seen right. it and they took it back, you wouldn't have really known it was there until the eighties. You, you understand what I'm saying? Until right, right, the eighties right. or whatever. But it was it was alive right. and well. You know what I'm saying? In the north, you know, so, in, in New York and the cities above, because they used to travel down to the Bronx. Right. So so Shaw Rock, you're telling me you were already touring and going outside of New York in the seventies. Yes. Yes, wow. yes, yes, of course, wow. of course. Well, I mean, well, I, well, well, not not in 78 going into 79. Because remember, I tell right. you that 78 is the p- pivotal year where um, it was the turning point for the culture of it coming together. So even though it was like 76, I was a B girl, you know, and, and 70, at the end of 77, I became, um, you know, an MC. 78 was the year that, you know, with us going around and traveling around and, 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 and um, rhyming and going to different, you know, different states or whatever, we were taking that to different states, you know. But but right. as a B-girl, I wasn't break dancing out there, but I was rhyming. I mean, out there when we go to the other states, you know, with my group, you know, I didn't I didn't break, you know, it wasn't like we had everybody out there, you know, break dancing, you know, and out there, whatever. We was rhyming, did what we had to do and go back. But when I go to places like North Carolina, you know, which was where I was born, I would, you know, do that, you know, for the summer as a, you know, little girl, you know, just, just, um, you know, just break dance or whatever. Nobody wasn't trying to let me get on my, get on a mic down there, you know, because these right, older right. people that didn't understand what was going on up north. Right. You know. Right. Hey, but Shaw Rock, let me ask you this: How does it feel yes. being that you just put me up on some game? I didn't know you went way back to the seventies yes. where you were actually already yeah. performing. But let me ask you this: How does it feel when, just like you just spoke about the story you you told us about, and you coming out in the seventies and doing what you did and had a record deal and performing? How does mm-hmm. it feel when you, uh, I mean, to the world when you see? I've heard other people talk about it, but the, you you predate them. But when you see a group like the Sugar Hill Gang, um, um, when they come out with their record, which a lot of people really, really uh, claim as the first record of hip hop, you know, to really go mainstream, and that's what people know hip hop coming well, from is. the Sugar Hill thing. But they is. did. It is, yeah, it is. And let me tell you why. Because they, it was the first record to really go mainstream, and I will tell you why. Because they came out, they saw, they came out with this song in 1979, like I think in September, October, right? And then, of course, people say that King Tim the Third, you know, was the first hip hop song, you know, 
that may be true, but me, I come from the streets of New York, so I'm not looking at if they're looking at that like a hip hop record. I'm not looking at. I'm I'm just being honest. You know, it's no disrespect, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm when I'm talking about the hip hop songs that we used to rhyme and rock to, I'm looking at it from a different angle, especially being a female. And so now, when you talk about um, the the Sugar Hill Gang, the Sugar Hill Gang rhymed to a song that we were already rocking to in the clubs, which was good times, right? Yeah. So right, right. as a young girl, I'm, I'm honing my skills. I'm like, you know, I'm like hip-hop to the core. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm a female. I'm a founder woman. I sleep, I eat, I breathe, I eat the culture. Because this is what I mm-hmm. know as, as a, a, a young female and also a founder member, right? So then when you hear somebody rhyming to us, uh, I mean, like, all of a sudden, boom, somebody makes a record. But it's a song to what you were already rhyming to on the streets of New York. A lot of right. us was, was feeling a type of way. We And, and I'll say this out of, um, you know, I'll say this. As it, at me being, you know, a part of it, I was mad. I was like, what the hell? Is a song you need to get on the radio and this is something that I'm living to. But you, we could have been mad all we want to, but I promise you, that was a song that whenever you heard that song, you got on the dance floor and you danced for it and you right. rocked to it. So we had no other right. choice but to respect the game and what they did far as well, what Sylvia did. Because even though you had Bobby Robinson, I don't know if y'all seen the, the you know, the show, um, what is it called? Um, um, Godfather of Harlem. But then they talk about yeah, yeah, Bobby Robinson in that movie. Now, what y'all don't right. know is that Bobby Robinson, and, and I'm a, I'm a, talk, I, I'm, I'm doing a movie, so I'm gonna talk about, about, I talk about him in my movie. But what y'all don't know is that Bobby Robinson, he formed like the, the really like the first rap label, which was Enjoy Label. See, they don't speak about that in the movie, but that's what Bobby Robinson did. He formed Enjoy Record. He had the most powerful um, MCs that was on the streets of New York. We were the first to sign when Enjoy Label under Bobby Robinson. You know, and then you had, um, I think Spoonie G is supposed to be his nephew. You had Spoonie G later. You had the Furious Five. You had the Treacherous Three. You had Master Don in the death, co- death Committee. So he had, but we were first assigned to him. So Bobby Robinson had all the prolific MCs on that label. Now, the difference between him and Sylvia, which was Sugar Hill Records, was that I think she had a better a better reach. She knew how to market right. the songs better. You know what I'm saying? Now, Bobby Robinson right. was in the music industry, too, but so was Sylvia. So whoever she got down with or whatever, she had a better reach, you know what I'm saying, for um, the putting the songs out. So when you talk about one, one of the songs, um, like the first song being the one that went around the world, we got to give it to the Sugar Hill Gang because that, they did that. They did that. Right. It was just that all the prolific MCs were on a different label than Sugar Hill. Now, we wind up right. doing all of us wind up most of us wind up going over to Sugar Hill later and that's why you hear that's the joint you know in 1980 that we made under Sugar Hill but most of the prolific MCs that was on the street at the time was under Enjoy Record which was Bobby Robinson label right okay but yeah. and, and check this out I want to speak real briefly again on Sugar Hill game because like you uh-huh. said you felt some kind of way a lot of uh, original MCs did um, but you have to give them the credit like you said for uh, having the first rap song and going real big major yeah, and, put hip hop around the world yeah taking it to a global, right. global, global level yeah right but 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 on top of that which I've heard a lot of original <laughs> MCs say it, it, not only did it feel some type of way but it was hard to respect them because, from what I hear, they weren't the real MCs. They would uh, like had it ro- written for them, and they just performed it, and but got the respect as being some of the founders and original MCs when they really weren't. There was no. They Can were you no elaborate founders. on that? They were no founders. They were no. They were not founders of anything. What they mm-hmm. did was, Sylvia Robinson had an idea when she went to a club. And she heard them rhyming to Good Times, a song that if you was that MC and you were performing at clubs, that was the song that we made popular in the clubs, in hip hop. Because we took that song and flipped it and rhymed it to them. We didn't use the, um, we, we didn't use the lyrics of, of the artist. We, the only thing you would hear is Good Times, and then they would just slice it up, slice it up, slice it up, and we'll rhyme to it. That's what we did back in New York, now in the right. Bronx. Now, the thing is that they didn't create nothing. 
what Sylvia did, Sylvia Robinson, who was, uh, you know, who owns Sugar Hill Records, or she, um, you know, she, she's not here today, but she owns yeah, Sugar Hill Records, yeah. so she went to the club, she heard it, you know, and she heard the song, and she had to put, um, um, she said, okay, listen, I'm going to go back, and I got an idea, I'm going to know how to make some money, I'm going to put this on wax, and that's what she did, she, that's what she did, she put it on wax. But they didn't create nothing. We have to give them the respect to say that they were um, a group that to this day you 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 hear Sugar Hill, Hill um, you know, Rapid Delight. I go crazy to this day. No, I was mad as a teenager because I'm out here like on the, on the ground, you know, like I'm saying. But they they right. did it first and, and they got known for it. And she had the the know how to market the music, and that's what she did, you know. So no, they didn't create something, but they did have the biggest hit record you know, that, that came out that exposed um, uh, rapping on a record to a global audience. So we have to give mm-hmm. them credit. But no, they didn't create anything. And I'm here to tell <laughs> you. Cause I was right, there. yeah, we just wanted to, we wanted to clarify that. Um, also, I, I want to ask you, you uh, one, one more thing on this uh, before we move forward. I want to ask you, speaking on the origins of hip-hop, who would you give as well as yourself and Funky Four uh, uh, credit for uh, – not only the origins of hip hop, but people that you respected that were all doing it at the same time. Maybe you were that we don't know or do know that you give credit for and give respect for helping all this come together at the beginning when you were there. Right. So as I stated before, um, you know, back in the days, and it's no disrespect to any, um, uh, you know, like disco DJs that played the music that may have been on the radio, you know, the RB songs. Because these are the right. songs that we we even took, you know, to the to the clubs and cut them up. DJ Cool Herc, and no matter what nobody tell you, people could say, well, this person was over here, and this person was over here, and this person was over here. Regardless of you know um, what you may or may not heard, I know for me as a young, you know, a teenager, and especially a woman, Cool Herc was the the DJ Cool Herc was was the person that I've always felt like the god of hip hop because he provided okay. he provided a space for young teenagers to come that they wanted to break dance, they wanted you know, they wanted to be B girls and B boys and he played those songs that that was synonymous with the B girls and B boys. And a lot of people may not give him his credit because they feel like, you know, oh, you know, Father Hip Hop, there was more people, you know, elsewhere, but I know. As a big girl, I used to travel, and I know that he gave those parties to make sure that we had a safe place to come and listen to those break beats and and and, and break and, and um and break dance. You know that what they may say mm-hmm. now as B girls and B boys and play those break beats to make us want to come and keep coming back and giving our two or three dollars to get in. Now also. Mm-hmm. Um, second to D- Disco King Mario, you know he's called Disco King Mario. He did somewhat of the same things that that Herc did. He was just a different part of the town. But for me, mm-hmm. even though I knew Mario and he put me under his wing, I give him credit. But I know far as the beats and and the aviance of people coming to hear the songs, who heard. I would give um, okay. Melly Mel, um, Grandmaster Melly Mel, um, um, you know, that was part of the Furious Five, you know, um, mm-hmm. credit as well. Because, and I say this because Mel is the one, even though Mel um, and his brother Creole and um, Cowboy was out before the Funky Four and he was out before me. You know, when I heard a tape of Mel, even though I heard Cowboy first because we lived basically in the same era. But when I heard them okay. on the radio, I mean, I'm not on the radio, but on a cassette tape, you know, for me, when I was going to school, they used to have cassette tapes. You know, people used to stand in front of the schools with the cassette tapes. So when I heard Mel, I always liked Mel's delivery because his delivery was not, not like no one else. Exactly. And because That's there was no female, right, yeah. right. And because there were no females um, out at the time, I would always model my cadence behind Melly Mel. You know, or when I wrote a rhyme, it was always a rhyme and a cadence to deliver it because I always felt like he had the delivery and the cadence to bring forth um, something that would engage the crowd or your audience where they would pay their two, three dollars to come back and see again because they was mesmerized by your rhyme. So I want to give some credit and I always give him credit for that, you know. And so right. when you talk about, you know, anybody else, you know, um, there's a lot of people that that's out there, you know, even the females that they came after me, a lot of people don't know, you know, the Mercedes ladies, they were the all, all first, you know, DJ um, and MC group. 
female DJ mm-hmm. and MC group, they had um, like Baby D that could cut just like Flash or, or Grand Wizard Theodore. Grand Wizard Theodore is another one that I'll give credit, you know, to. He's from the, the mm-hmm. old brothers, you know, from the, the Bronx synonymous group from, mm-hmm. you know, back in the days. But, um, and Queen Lisa Lee, you know, she was one of the, um, the females that was a part of uh, the Zulu Nation, you know, that they wind up getting her to be able to, uh, to, de- to deal with me. But what happened is that we became best friends for all of these years. So it's it's a mm. lot of people that I want to you know to um, to to um, to to make sure that they get their props. But those are the people that you know I say, you know, listen, these right. are unsung heroes who y'all may or may not know. Okay, great. I yes. just wanted to give people their credit, you know. So I'm glad you yes, can speak about absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And let me say this also, before I continue, you just spoke of Unsung. I think that will be, I think Unsung, the, the show needs to definitely have an episode with you, you know. Uh, I don't know. Or I, you know, know I don't know, they, I don't I don't know why know they ever they had that. Yeah, no, because I'm going to tell, I'm a tell <laughs> the truth. Let me, say, it's, let me tell you, Lou, there's no one, there's no, no other female, or probably a male, yeah, it's a lot of them out there can do it, but they know I was on that front line, and they know they can't come with no craziness. Because I was there. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't tell me. And like I said, I never went out, you know, and, and this is to you, Courtney. I never went out and um, and, 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 and felt like there was a need to um, sort of kind of like solidify myself and let people know who I, was, uh, who I was until they started changing the narrative. And so I had to say, listen, I got tapes. I got cassette tapes from 78. I got videos from 78 on stage. Mm. I got flyers. <laughs> flyers. You understand what I'm saying? I got footage. Nobody else, no other female, no nobody else could produce that, especially not in 78. You understand what I'm saying? So I have it. I have it. And so for anybody to say, oh, that's not true, I tell you, I, I stand by everything I did, and everything that I say that I did, I could prove who I say I am. You understand? Mm. The first female, the yeah, first me, first female to be on national television Saturday Night Live. Saturday no, Night I Live. Mean, Come on now. Yeah, right. 81. Right. 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 So wow. all of that stuff, I did it. Now I may not have gotten the money for it, but it wasn't really about the money, money. But yeah, I want my money now, and I'm in court to get my money now. But my thing is that, that for me. Back then, it wasn't about that. It was about the ambiance. It was about leading the culture forward, making sure that people understand the elements. Because everything that they're going through now, like young kids, and I do, um, you know, I travel around the world now and do college tours, you know, and I'm getting ready to, to go out again, you know, tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. But the thing is, is that, you know, I always tell the young kids, even with the, the gang balance and all that stuff, and I want y'all to hear me. Everything that they're going through now, we've, we've been through. I done been around gangs. I done been around all of that stuff. That's what New York was built around, you know, back in the days. But this is one of the reasons why um, uh, hip-hop culture was created. And don't let nobody fool you. It was a way for us to get away from everything that was going on negative around us at the time. We had crooked, crooked politicians in New York. There were so many different types of activity was going on in New York. And, yeah, I was around it. I was around it. All, I knew the people that was in it, but I didn't chose to deal in it because I had the respect of the streets in New York. Then listen, when y'all come, we're coming. We're coming to have fun. Not only that, not only that too. You know, we had my um, my uh, group, the Brothers Disco and the Funky Four. We had notorious security that was everywhere that you can come into our parties and shoot up or stick up the parties or anything. We were the first organized, the Funky Four. And the, uh, the the Brothers Disco, which which that's the organization, but the 4 4 fell under that, was the first organized and synchronized group because we had security. We had hype girls. Now, you may see, like, hype girls and all that stuff in the crowds, and they come to the parties or whatever. We started that era. We started where we had um, the, the, the our hype girls and our security run around with the Brothers Disco and the uh, Sister Disco shirts. I had my own security, which was the Sister Disco, but there was also the hype um, girls that would hype up the guys' rhymes and also hype up my rhymes. If they in the crowd and they know my rhymes, they say my rhymes, and they hyping up the crowd to know my rhymes at all. So when I tell so when I tell y'all that you know um, I'm a founding member of the hip hop culture, these are the things that we put in place as MCs so people can come the next time 
and they know your rhymes, you know, because you had the, the your your group, your your crew out in the back saying your rhymes and getting everybody to sing along with it. You understand? So all that, all the negative and all of that other stuff that was going on, you know, now or maybe going on, it has been going on for years. The culture was to me, and I don't know how nobody else feel, but that was my safe haven. Because I knew what was going out, going on out in the streets in the Bronx. But when you had the five percenters and when you had like the Zulu Nation and when you had like, you know, different people see you walk in the street and you know that they, they that, that you're covered by their security because they love hip hop and they want to see Sha Rock the next day or the next weekend come and rhyme, whatever. That was everything to, to me because hip hop was about the unity in the clubs. Yeah, you had your sick up kids try to come through, you know, and, 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 and rob other events, but they didn't do it at our events because we had that all in place. You mm. understand? Mm. Right. That part. That part. Right. Hey, uh, Shaw Rock, I got a gang of questions. But before I continue, let me I, go I, to the phone lines. I can give it to you. I can give it to you. I already you. know. I already know. <laughs> Hold on one yeah. second. Let me go to the phone line. I got a special caller that uh, wants to no talk problem. to you. Caller, hello. She said she applied last night. Caller, hello. Okay. <laughs> caller, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> What's up? You live on the air, sir. With Miss Shaw Rock. Well, I didn't know that. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. What's going on? They press one. What's going on, sir? I didn't know I was on the air. Okay, my but bad, anyway. yeah, bro. I, they press no, one. I'm sorry, good. bro. Actually, I didn't press one, but it's all good. I got a new phone. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. but you have anyway, a legendary man, shot rock right here, sweet man. She's speaking her piece, man, and I'm not mad at all, man. You better let them know, because if you don't tell your story, ain't nobody else going to tell it for you. I know Thank who you, you are. I even seen Thank that you. episode on Saturday Night Live. It's floating around out there. Thank it you. It really is. It's floating around Thank out you. there. So. Thank you. Man, get your propers, girl. You damn Thank sure you. deserve it. Tell a friend, tell a friend, sir. You press one, so now you on. Tell a friend, tell a friend. <laughs> let them know, okay? It ain't a problem at all, young lady. Thank you, you so are, much for listening. You, thing. you started it. You deserve all the accolades that come with it, too. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I'm humble. Thank you so much. You, you earned it, Ma. You all good. Thank you for tuning in as well. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, what, what a great story, man. L.A. loves you. They, oh, oh, L.A., tell L.A. I love him, too. Somebody just say, <laughs> somebody asked me, when you coming out to L.A.? I was like, yo, do I need a pass? <laughs> they say you got to have a pass. I need a pass to come to L.A. <laughs> well, you got to do a fake tweet cat like that. Baby. that that's the password. Fake tweet cat like that's that. That's the password. Baby. That's all you need. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Much respect. I love L.A. too. I have lots of friends out in L.A. and I love L.A. Much respect. You know, and, and this is what one of the things too, um, Lou. Somebody had asked me right because the whole thing was they were saying about like L. A. and Snoop and and all of them, right? So one of the questions was um, like because people was like, oh, you know, with sequence is not hip hop, and I tried to explain it to them. Some people were like, well, yeah, they hip hop because they came out with the you know the first rap first record. So, you know, we're going back and forth, you know, on the Facebook and all that stuff. And those, those you know, what I would, would like to consider my friend. But what I tried to explain to everybody, too, yet it came out, you know, in 79, you know, with a rap song, which is one of the elements of hip-hop. But they hadn't experienced hip-hop prior to that and what was going on. So somebody said, well, what about Snoop and what about L.A. and all that stuff? You don't consider them hip-hop because they don't, they, they, they wasn't there, you know, in 70. I say, no, y'all got it twisted because the thing is, what they don't know about the history is that African Islam was from the Bronx. He took, he took a lot of the elements to L.A., with with right. um with with IT and IT. all right and all yep. of that stuff. See, they don't know. I know the history. They don't know. I know how it went down. Mm -hmm. You had cats and mm -hmm. all of them that went went out there. So the thing is, is that yeah, L A is hip hop to the fullest. Why? Because they know. They know the deal. They were they they were doing hip hop music in the park. It don't matter what year it was or whether or not it was seventy or ninety. They was embracing the elements. And the elements was that they were doing hip hop in the park. They were also rhyming with their DJs behind them. That was the difference. Now things may have changed then, but when when hip hop you know, exploded in LA, they were they were um, 
celebrating all of the, the elements. So hip, L.A. is hip-hop to the fullest. We're, we were talking about 79 when they came out, and they hadn't celebrated none of the elements. But, mm-hmm. but L.A. were celebrating the elements. Don't matter whether or not it was 80 or 90. It doesn't matter. They were embracing all of the elements. So we, that you hip-hop to the fullest because you're embracing the elements and not just one element. You know? Right. So that's the way I right. feel. Shout out to L.A. And, and, yeah. Shout out to L.A. I was raised in L.A. as well. That's and like right. I said, we, we got it early in the 80s and just, right. you know, it engulfed right. the culture right. of L.A. It was all about B-boy, breakdance and all that. Exactly. Graffiti, everything. Right. Everything. Right. We embraced it. Right. Um, but I want to ask you, I want to ask you, how did you feel uh, starting hip hop and being on the front line? I want to ask you, when did it start to expand in your eyes that you've seen, you know, because uh, not only it started in the Bronx, but you have boroughs in New York as well. When did it, right. it, when did it, to your knowledge, expand and go out to the other boroughs and then go outside of New York? And how did it's you feel when you seen hip hop? In '78, because okay. we took it to okay. other boroughs. We have the flyers to prove it. This is why you hear. You would hear people like um, 78 and 79. You hear like, um, what's the crew from Staten Island? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the group from Staten Island. Y'all, y'all know them. They Wu-Tang. from Staten Island, Long Island. Huh? Well, yeah, Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang know about us, but it was before Wu-Tang. Um, it was before before Wu-Tang, the group before Wu-Tang. I got it right on my my um, my tongue. But However, we, we, we went and played, uh, played at a party. For their for their sister, but it was one of the major because I don't know why I can't remember right now. But but the thing is that we expanded it. We expanded it so much that we took it out that you heard the four MDs out in Staten Island. You know that mm-hmm. that knew who the the Funky Four was. We took it up to Connecticut. We took it in all places. Now when you hear people like like Jay Z in his rhyme and he'll say I want to um, pay them back for what they did to the Cold Crush. And what people don't know about that that part is that they're talking about the Cold Crush Brothers, right? But the Tony Tone that started one of the members, the guys that started the Cold Crush was with us first. He was he was he was with us in seventy eight and and, and, and and part of seventy nine. So the Cold Crush wasn't even in effect, you know, during that era. It wasn't until like eighty, eighty one. Although you may have some members that were out there like Grandmaster Cass you know, that was a DJ and became an MC later, or you may have like whip a whip, you know, made that was out there. The cold crush wasn't fully formed because uh, uh, Tony Tone was my security. And he was also the person that would set up the uh, equipment for the Brothers Disco and the Funky Four, the sound system, the Mighty Sasquatch. So it wasn't until 79, early 80, when we only took breakout on tour, our DJ breakout on tour with us, and we didn't take the other DJ. It was then where uh, uh, Tony Tone had began to put the Cold Crush Brothers together. So the reason why um, Jay Z probably really didn't know, oh, he said because the Cold the Cold Crush, you know what they did to the Cold Crush, because when he's talking mm-hmm. about the rhyme that uh, Kaz allowed uh, Big Bang Hank to use, but never got paid for the rhyme. So I don't know if your mm-hmm. your, your your audience know that. So that's what he's talking about when he's saying what what um, what um, you know. Um, I'll get him back to what they did to the Cold Crush, you know, and, and one of his anthem songs. But it, but but um, I wanted to let your audience know that a lot of the people that they are familiar with, a lot of people that they know about, like a lot of the groups, a lot of the songs that were made, majority of those people came out of the Funky Four camp. So we we started with a lot of people, you know, like I'm saying from the, the Cold, um, Tony Tone, you know, that started the Cold Crush Brothers to, you know, 45 Team Mart, you know, th- that did Hard Night Life and and uh, and right. uh, Queen, some of Queen Latifah's hits, you know, came out of our camp, out of the Funky Four camp. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, um. Uh. Let me ask you this as well. Um. Being with all that said, um. You went from the your first label in the 70s and then like we spoke about yeah. Sylvia Ron, um Sugar Hill Records which was basically Sylvia became Robinson, yeah. the, the home front the, 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 the forefront for hip hop on the next level you know what I mean and, right. and we know your right. issues with them now we're getting into that but I want to ask you how was oh, that you know when you issue. transitioned from yeah yeah to be, and we want to get into that because I know that's a long story yeah, yeah, still going on to this day we're going to get into that but, but, <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but check it out I want to ask you yeah. how was it transitioning from the first label you were on to now going to Sugar Hill, which is the biggest thing. And even though hip hop was early and beginning stages, that was the biggest thing in hip hop, the biggest label. How was that a miss uh, besides the issues that, that came later, but how was that transitioning going to that label and now 
being on a bigger platform. How was that whole experience for you? Well, well, I, I have to give it to Sugar Hill Records, and it's what we thought was going to happen. Now, 79, we out there. We were, we were already on the streets, you know, before before Fred Records, you know, in, in 79. So 79, we out right. there. We signed with Enjoy Records. So we we thinking, okay, now we're going to be on a bigger level because now even though, like, the tri-state areas know us, you know, the Connecticut from the Washington, to, from the Phillies, cause they, to Philadelphia, because they listen to the to the, uh, the, the cassette. Same station. Thing. With, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. with okay. the record, it's going to take us to a whole nother level. So we're doing like, you know, uh, uh, you know, like uh, TV shows and all of that stuff, you know, uh, cable TV shows, you know, under, you know, Enjoy Record. But when we heard the Sugar Hill label and, and, and Rappers Delight Record, and we saw that they was moving in a whole different level and on a much bigger level. Mind you, 79, we still on contract with Enjoy Record. But we negotiating in early 80, it hadn't even been a year to switch over to Sugar Hill Records. Because we knew, well, if they doing all of this for the Sugar Hill game, and we know that we're the bona fide MCs, and we know mm-hmm. how to put that show together, and we know how to kick them rhymes, then we should be able to be taken to a whole nother level. And what Sugar Hill Records did was, they did that in a in a sense because we did that to join and we went on I think right. like a, a fifty two city tour. <laughs> we had the first hip hop tour ever. She had the first hip hop tour ever that we went on. But we, we went around to different states and, 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 and cities and places that we had never been outside of the tri state areas like Philadelphia, you know, North Carolina, whatever. So we went to places like Wisconsin, Florida, you know, all over the world, you know, with them. And mm-hmm. so she did what she was supposed to do and what we thought she was going to do by taking us, you know, to all the places that we never did. And we was on that first tour. So um, it was what we expected, although we didn't get paid for the way we were supposed mm. to. But we are young kids mm. growing up, not knowing. Our parents didn't know. They didn't know how to move around because these people were already in the industry. So they knew how to move around. They knew how to move and get what they wanted. We were just young, innocent kids in our teens that just wanted to rhyme, just wanted to, to be that MC that we was we was born to be, that we was already doing in New York City. So if you're telling us you're going to give us a certain amount of money, then we expect to get that money. You understand what I'm saying? But once again, so, so, we were still out there doing what we loved. Right. Right. Let me, let me ask you this, uh, Shawrock. Being that you signed the contract, you got out of a different contract, negotiated, came to Sugar Hill. They promised you this, Whatever promised they you that. When you I, signed, we don't even know to this day how we got out of it, but they negotiated it. Both both uh, Bobby Robinson and Sylvia Robinson negotiated the contract or whatever they did to get out of it. How they did it, we right. don't know because we weren't privy to that type of information when you're 16, 17, you know, going on 18 years old, you don't know how they maneuver. All we know was we wanted out. We wanted to go over to uh, Sugar Hill Records because they were doing what they were supposed to do for the Sugar Hill gang. They were out there. You know, as soon as we signed, probably like six months, seven, eight, eight months, we, we had signed a contract with Sugar Hill Records, but we were like six months in, you know, before we even recorded our song. It was a couple of months after that that we had begun to start going on tour, really like, you know, the end of 80, 81, that we had begun to start going on tour. But the crazy thing about it is that Sugar Hill didn't book no tours for us. They didn't do nothing for us prior to that. We still had the song um, of Rapping and Rocking Rockin the House, which was the first longest rap record ever, 16 minutes over. You know what I'm saying? That we had we had the longest rap record ever. To, I guess somebody tried to beat the history of of the uh, of the rap song that we had. So we were still working, you know, off of uh, rapping and rocking the house. You know, that's why you may see some of the footage and all of that stuff that's out there now. You know, with us being, um, you know, down in in, in like the uh, ca- Caucasian venues. The Funky Four mm-hmm. was the first one to really go and expand out of the hip hop arena. As far as MCs, we was going to places where you had the Beastie Boys. We were going to places uh, where you would see the the Blondies or you know the Debra Harrys or whatever. So we went outside of our uh, of our element to go and perform for other nationalities besides African Americans. And this is where we didn't know at the time that you had the Beastie Boys 
in the crowd to, to, mm-hmm. to, to, to watching us perform. And so I remember one year, you know, when they was receiving um, an award from um, VH1, and, and um, I guess one of the commentators asked, well, you know, who was your, your influence? And they said, you know, uh, uh, the Funky Four, you know, and Sha Rock, the plus one one. I was like, whoa. You know, and then it's like, okay, at some point as when I started digging, I was like, okay, then they said that they used to come to the clubs or whatever. At that time, we didn't know that they were in the crowd watching the Funky Four or watching Sha Rock. So, mm-hmm. you know, I want your audience to know that, <laughs> yes, whether or not it may or may not mean nothing to them, but I was that female, you know, to help carry my, carry my group, and my group carried me, and we went to places, and we 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 did things that the normal MCs that came out of the Bronx didn't do. You understand what I'm saying? And we we uh, brought that new hip hop to different people before rap records, be really before rap records, because we were still going downtown. But don't let nobody else tell y'all. The video that we have out there from 1980 at the Mud Club shows that we were the first, you know what I'm saying, to, um, if you see me young on that video, we were, that, was, that was a white crowd. That wasn't African Americans that was hollering and screaming and whistling and all that stuff. That was basically a white crowd that we were playing for downtown in the Mud Club, you know, in, in New York. We played at the Ritz right. and all of those places, right, right. Hey, Sha- Sha, Before let me any ask you MCs. This. Yeah. Right, let me ask you this. When you signed to uh, Sugar Hill, they, I know they promised you a lot, but did you guys get any type of advance or signing bonus? or any, Did you see any money? Because I know you did. You said you didn't see money later. $500 uh, but did one you time. You see any money? $500, in that, $500 one time and then $500 another time. No money, no money, no money. And so I can tell, I can wow. say this because it's common knowledge, you know, and stuff because I put it out. Everything is just that when I break down the movie, it would be, a, it would be on a different level. But the thing is, is that let me tell, let me tell you for anybody in your audience that listen now on the Sugar Hill record, if what I'm saying is a lie, the judge would not have ordered them to pay us back the money. I filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of just about everybody that was a part of Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill Records. So if they didn't join, that was on them. If they joined, they got their money. The Furious Five joined. Some of the members of the Crash Crew joined. The Funky Four joined. Sequence didn't want to join at the time, you know, but they came back to me later and asked for my attorney, but I got them their money. Now, they just finding out that I'm the one that went around and searched for all the lawyers in New York City and nobody wouldn't take the case until I found out, until I found one person that took the case. And so, Record. I'm not lying. Mm-hmm. If you, they, you go to the courts in New York, you pull it up, they'll tell you. These people had to pay me my money, and I'm still waiting for a new court date for some other stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So no, they didn't pay us. No, they didn't. No, but they let, didn't. Let, let me for ask all the records that I have out there, no. That's crazy. And I heard you speak about it stories is. of this where you had to go to other countries yeah. and see the shit on the shelf and you're not getting paid. I but did. let me ask you I this. Did. Why do you think I did. why do you think though, uh, going way back to Sylvia Rohn, who I've heard a lot Robinson, Sugar Robinson, Hill Records Robinson. Uh, Robinson, Robinson, I'm sorry, I said Rohn. Right. Uh-huh. No disrespect. No, it's all right. Hey, who, yeah, who, I know who we has robbed a lot of people right. that are publishing? Me. Right, right. That ain't Sylvia Rohn. My bad, my bad. Right, but uh right. why do you think I wanna ask you about these practices going way back to the seventies? And right. continued on in music almost to this day. Only thing that's stopping it now is that now, you know, the, the record business has changed. There's this internet and digital. So now the the the, the company. So has it really back. changed? Why do you think? Are they still getting no, publishing? Has it, but, has it but, really? Yeah, they okay. are. They are. They are. But let me ask okay. you this: Why? Right. My question yeah. is this: Why do you think these practices have been going on since then and are still going on, especially from labels? who are supposed to be quote-unquote black labels who are supposed to take a different route and they do the same thing. Why do you think these practices have been going on and they're still going on to this day? Well, I think, um, and, and this is no disrespect to anybody that's out there, but I think that just like, uh, you know, you have the young kids that, or even, you know, the kids at the time that they signed or they're signing now, they don't have attorneys in their corners. To, or people in their corners to tell mm-hmm. them the right way, and not everybody now, because you got some some of them out there that 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 read. They don't even use attorneys, but they read. They find out. They they know how to negotiate. You know their 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 brand. But but the most average right. young person that don't know how to negotiate, all they want to do is be be seen in front of the masses. 
You understand what I'm saying? And they want to make the little bit of money, you know, here and there. But you don't make the money from records. You don't do that. You don't make the money from this and that. Or they may sign, you know, the deals to put them into a, a, a place where they cannot get out. So the reason why the practice is still going on, because they are not having the right representation to assure that these things are in the best of their interest. Because you got people like... Um, what um, Chance the Rapper? He ain't running around here with no record deal, but he gets his mm-hmm. because he has learned. You know what I'm saying? What to do and what not to do. I don't know if he have a deal now. I know that what a while back he didn't have a deal, but he knows he's learning. He he's getting good representation. He's getting he's talking to people that's going to be in a, his corner to tell him what he needs to do and what he not needs to do. So I think now it's just a problem that like us back then. All you want to do is do what you do. You want people to see your craft. You want people to see your brand. You want people to hear you rocking. Back then, we only worried about getting money from McDonald's, I mean, a White Castle, and getting money to get on a train. You know what I'm saying? And our parents wasn't, you know, privy to the information, nor was we, until it was too late. So the thing is, is that now... You know, unless you go back and you, you, you check what's going on and you go back and you, you um, even though you be like, oh, those old cats, you know, those old heads, I ain't trying to find, I'm not trying to listen to them. They don't know. They hate and they jealous. They bitter, all of that stuff. Nah, find out what it is. Find out why did they, what happened back then. So that way you can, you can be everything that you need to be. Find out what happened, you know, during the whole of years. Why? Why those MCs are not where they're supposed to be? Why those artists are not supposed to be where they're supposed to be? Is it their fault? Or was it the label's fault? Was it because they didn't spend their money right? Because that's only going to make you the better person as an artist to find out what went wrong with these most prominent people. And if they're successful, find out why they're successful. What did they do different mm-hmm. than the average person that they didn't, um, they didn't, they didn't fall? You, you understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just that it's knowledge. And that's one of the things of, 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 of hip-hop coaching, one of the elements is knowledge. you got to understand um, what, what happened prior or what's going on now. Even if it ain't in my era, even if it's in the, the 80s era or the 90s, you got to take the, the biggest person who you respected and see how they move it or from, and, 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 and why they moving different. What happened? What's so different than the MCs that started the culture? Because it's not just somebody being bitter. It's just that the practices of what was going on at that time, if you know, would have been a lot different than it is now. So don't make the same mistake. That's all. You got to get somebody that, that, that rocks with you, that you know, they got your back, that's going to pull your coat, put you under, under their wing and say, look, ride with me. Ride with me. This is what needs to be done. This is how you need to do it. And I promise you, you'll be successful. I promise you that you stay away from all the drama. Get in, get your money, and get out. That's the best mm. way. And, and this is for and, all and, and, the young kids out here. That, that flash, and you don't see Bill Gates run around doing all that. You don't need all that. You don't need to flash your stuff. Everybody, listen, young kids, listen, everybody is not privy. Then they're not happy for you. I worry about my family, my kids every day. You understand what I'm saying? I, when I walk the street, guess what? I live in Texas, and half of the people don't even know I, where, I, where I live at. Because I would never, even though I didn't make the money from, from them, you know, from, from Sugar Hill or, or records or what I did, I had a plan B. So I had a plan mm-hmm. B. So I retired law enforcement. And this is what I tell you. I had a plan B. I retired law enforcement. I invested well with, with little resources of what I had. So I didn't have to count on somebody in the culture ripping me off. So when I, when I retired, I said, okay, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get mine and I'm going to let the world know who I am and what I did and I'm going to continue to move the way that I have to because you don't need all of that. As long as you live in comfortable and you, you don't bring people into your life that you know that's not going to be loyal to you because nobody loves you out there in that street. For all you young kids, if you listen, if you think this is an old head show, nobody loves you in the street. You don't need all of that. You don't need to flaunt to be out there. Wear that shit in your shower. I don't care. Don't come out. You don't need all of that. Just have it, do what you got to do, or go around somebody who you know that's on the same level as you that's not going to take down what you work so hard for. Because you're never right. supposed to put yourself in the predicament to be taken out of this life or, or this world just because somebody is a hater. Mm. Never put yourself in right. that predicament. Never. Never. Because I walk around I... in my Timberlands. 
I walk around in my Timberland to this day. I don't care. They 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 high heel Timber. I walk around. I walk around in my Gloria Vanderbilt. I walk around in, in my Kango hat. This is what I do because I'm comfortable in it. I don't need all the other stuff. But I live. I live. I live okay. But I don't need. I don't need to show vote none of. Nobody needs to show vote none of that. For what? For hey, what? but um, Sean, let me ask. Let me ask you this, Sean Rock. In your opinion, why do you think, like I asked you, why do you think these practices are be, still being practiced, you know, uh, how, how these labels do people? But because my thing is, everybody is black, but listen, so, every day. But, but it's black labels. The labels that I suppose we think we're signing to that will do us different than the other labels have done. You know you what? Know, and then it's, it's not just the black. Lou, it's not just black. It's, it's everybody. Yeah. If they If they put that paperwork in front of you, and you looking like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm about to be on now. They're going to know I'm, I'm riding. But by next week, I'm, my, my, my stuff is going to be out there. I'm going to ride. It ain't just black labels. Yeah, we expect black labels to be the one to say, um, you know, oh, yeah, look out for we African American. You're supposed to take care of your community. No, they're not going to do that because they're out to make money too. Now, you, we would hope that they would do that. You, you understand what I'm mm. saying? You would hope mm. that they would do that. But unless you go in and you know what you're talking about and you got somebody under your wing, you know what I'm saying, that's going to school you on the tactics of the, the music industry, then you should never put your whole heart in just because it's a black label. White labels do it too. You have mm. to go in there with somebody that's going to have your best interest in hand. And don't be so quick to ride out because this is your chance. Because you could sign away your life forever and never get nothing. Was it all worth it? But fame. Fame, that's it. It was everybody. Hey, um, it's everybody. Yeah. Hey, Sha, let me ask you this. When did it, when did it, because like you said, you retired from hip hop early, you know, and um, started a different life. I didn't retire from hip hop. Well, well, whatever. I, I just, okay. I just pick and choose what I, 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 I deal with. Okay. But well, let me I ask you this. When was it that point? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So you you chose a different career after hip hop, but I'm asking you, I had a when plan was it? B. Exactly, but 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 what I'm saying is, when you were hot, you were with Sugar Hill now, and obviously things you know didn't go as right, and you had a hit record. Uh, 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 when did it? What happened to you, or where was it going for you to say, okay, I'm done with this? You know what I mean? Or for you to just fall back and the people not hear from you anymore. When I wasn't getting paid from the happened. record label, when I wasn't getting my money okay. from... So y'all only know that's the joint and maybe rapping and rocking the house. But we did about six or seven of the records that were being sold overseas, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't know that these mm -hmm. songs were being sold overseas. We thought that they were, weren't completed record because we were told that they still had to be mixed down. But yet they were selling overseas, Right. So the thing is, is that when I confronted and I found out that I wouldn't get paid, you know what I'm saying? Or I wasn't getting paid from the records. I was like, I'm done. I'm never going to allow myself to keep making records, making records, making records, and don't see a dime. You understand? So I was making records on into, to what, 83, 84. You, you mm -hmm. don't know what I'm saying? So by 84, um, 84 um, was when I did B Street. So that mm -hmm. was the, the 84 was when I did Beach Street. And I think I did something, you know, uh, like a year after that with Andy Stone and Malcolm McLaren. But I was like, I'm mm -hmm. done. I'm not, I'm not recording with Sugar Hill Records. No more. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not. And everything that I love, rhyming and whatever, I'm, I refuse to give that to somebody and not see a dime from it. I'm wiser now. So now I'm like, right, no, right. I can't do it. So that's when I, right. I um, wind up getting married. But, but. Um, still staying abreast of what was going on in the hip hop culture, you know the the, the MCs, the rhyme or whatever. So I knew everything that was going on, as opposed to maybe like an old head that came up from my era. You know, I don't never say, well, I don't like them because they are this type and they rap this way. I stay abreast on everybody that's out there now today because as an MC, as you, as it, it doesn't matter how you old you are. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed you to know who's out there. You're you supposed to whether or not you like it or not, right? So, but right, with right. me, I stayed away from it. all of that. Exactly. I say, I not stayed away from all of that. I stayed away from recording. So I wound up going to Germany. And then when I came back to Germany, you know, I jumped on filing a lawsuit. But still, by that time, time had went past. So I had begun to right. start doing guest features on people, you know, albums, you know, records, you know, overseas. You know, I did a song with, um, with um, um, 45 King Mark before I went to Germany. 
So, um, but but but, know, but 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 wait 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 yeah. wait, Sha Sha, hold on hold on one second, please. Let me let me please yeah. go back because we, we now you're going forward. <laughs> but I want to ask you two questions, right? Two big questions. That's First, uh-huh. take you a little bit back briefly, and then I want to go to this. But how was it for you to be a part of and perform on Saturday Night Live in 1981? Did you know how big that was? I mean. Because, you know, Saturday Night Live no, is still not going the on today, the biggest not show on Saturday time. Night. How was that? How was not that first? The then, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Not Answer at the that time first. until we got to we was in the dressing room. Not at the time. Because we was in the dressing room. Yeah, we will. Now we'll be able to people will be able to see us on a, a on a bigger stage. You know what I'm saying? Around the world because they had told us, you know, that all these people are going to be watching. Right. So we was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that night after we performed, we went straight to, we had a show. We did Saturday Night Live. But we was also, we had a limo to take us up to Connecticut. So it was like, when we, we came off the show, like the streets of New York, they were like happy for us when they found out it was going on. And we were like celebrities already, you know, in the streets of New York. But to get on Saturday mm-hmm. Night Live and be the first hip hop group on Saturday Night Live, we was grateful, humble. Now the world could see us. But for right. me... It wasn't until, like, in the 2000s that I realized that we made history. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. That we actually made history. Because the adept, you, when, when you're young, you don't think about stuff like that. When you're young, mm. you don't think about being that you're the first female MC out there. Because we never talked about it. We just, you just did it. It wasn't until right. other people start saying, no, I was the first on TV. Or I was the first female MC. Then you'd be like, oh, hell no, you wasn't. This is how it went down. So, yeah, I didn't even realize that we made an impact until I came back from Germany and I decided to find a lawsuit and I started explaining, you know, things to different people. And then I was like, yeah, you're right. People were like, yeah, you are. Like, yeah, you're right. We knew that millions of people was going to see it on TV. But to go down in history was another was another thing. Mm, but it was exactly. Awesome. And let me ask you this. Let me ask you this second question, because. I brought up Beat Street earlier, played the clip from Beat Street, and that's where a lot of people, even though you go back, and I'm glad you were able to speak on right. the story, but that's where a lot of people probably know you for the first time. You know what I mean? Being probably, on Beat Street, yeah. and that was early to a lot of people, but you're already 10 years deep. How was that True. experience, I want to ask you, being in a, a movie, and I'm sure you didn't know at that time, nobody did, that Beat Street will be a classic to this day, but how was that uh, being a part of a motion picture movie? Well, I talk about this, and, and some parts is in the some parts is in the the, the movie that I, that I'm trying to do, but I also wrote about it in the book, so it's not like y'all mm-hmm. can't see it. But my thing is that um, I put the us girls together for that movie. We weren't um, we weren't the, called the us girls; we were called the Empress. But I put them together mm-hmm. for that movie because I knew Lisa Lee, and I knew she was a dope MC. And I had seen um, Debbie D like in 81 and 82 performing because we were on the same card. I hadn't seen her before that. So I seen her around mm-hmm. in 81, 82. So when 84 came around and it was a flyer that was passed around and I got hold of the flyer, I went to Lisa and I said, Let, you know, let's be a part. Because at that time, at that time, I was still a part of the Funky Four, but we were, we were going through the breakup. I was a part of the Funky Four plus one. So we were going through the breakup of of of, of, of two of the members leaving still uh, leaving Sugar Hill. They didn't li- they didn't let all of us go, and we had a chance to go, but we did, we thought she was going to do the right thing. So they let two of the members go, and me, Jeff, and Keith was just you know making records, but I still was a part of them. But I still created the Us Girls. You know, the, we were Empress first, like a month or so, but I created the Us Girls for you know, the movie, you know what I'm saying? So I had got them, I had got, when I found out that the movie was coming together, uh, you know, I told Lisa, let's get, you know, this girl, Debbie, I seen her. She had known Debbie before and I, you know, got in touch with Debbie and then we became us girls for the movie. So once we became us girls, right, um, we had audition. So we had audition for the movie, right? Um, but Harry Belafonte came up and we had auditioned for the movie. But the thing about it was is that Lisa and Debbie didn't have a contract. I was under contract with Sugar Hill Records. So I just knew that they were going to be in the movie and I wasn't. You understand? So it was like, no way that, that wasn't going to happen. So I had to go to, um, when, when we was in Harry Belafonte's office, so I had to go to, um, go to him and say, look, these girls, they don't have a contract. I'm under contract. 
I don't know if she's going to let me do it because we're going through different things. So can you call her? He said, do you have a number? I said, yes, I got a number. I said that why he called. Whatever thing they worked out, you know, when I wasn't there, you know, at a later time, you know, um, later I found out that, um, you know, in order for, you know, me to do it, one of the stipulations is that they allowed the Furious Five, you know, to be a part of the movie as well and Melly Mel write the hook. This was told to me by Harry Belafonte. So, that's mm-hmm. how they got into the movie because when we did the interviews and, and, and they had to, uh, you know, had like the screening and all that stuff for people to come out there, you know, nobody was down there. Not even Dougie Fresh. Nobody was down there. The Us Girls was the only rap group that was down there at that time. People came later when they found out that we were a part of it. But it, it was a good feeling because, yes, it put us on a whole different level for as the Us Girls. But once again, people see me as Shy Rock from the Us Girls. Unless they right, do their right, research, right. they don't know They're that I was the real. Funky 4 plus 1 or the original Funky 4 or before, you know, um, uh, you know, before all of the records and all that stuff, unless they know the true history. You right. Understand? But, but, yeah, exactly, exactly. But let me ask you this on top of that, though, being that all that is said, how does it feel to know that you were a part of that? Because even though. Like you said, you, you predate that years, years, you know. Right. But how does it feel to still Beat Street, even though we had Wild Style, other stuff before that, Beat Street is the epitome of, you know, even for exactly. youngsters, it, it generations went of, yeah. of hip-hop, you know, and beat and B-Boy and everything. Beat Street is that movie. True. For you to be a part True. of that, and now, you know, you could, that that will be around forever when you're gone, grandkid or whoever yes. can see that yes. and know that Shaw Rock was a part of that. I'm sure you didn't know it time that that would be a cult classic but how does that feel knowing that you were a part of that and now you can see that all the time on tv or wherever <laughs> it's played and, and know that you're you were a part of that well i'm honored i'm honored no i'm honored i'm honored simply because as as everything that you say is the truth you know it's something that could be watched even if i'm not here today to watch it with my kids or my grandkids or whatever right. so yes i'm honored i'm going to always be honored you know, because it, it has put the name Shot Rock on a, on a you know, platform. But my platform as well is mm-hmm. to let people know about this culture. They got us to be street. You right. understand what I'm saying? As a founding right. member of hip hop culture and the first female MC of hip hip hop culture, because without this culture, B Street would never have been done. So yes, I'm 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 um proud, but I want people to know how we got to B Street. How I am mm-hmm. that 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 female and that MC and a found and, a, and one of the founding members that got us to B Street or Wild mm. Style or you that know uh, any other you know movie that came out you know right yes sir right great answer great answer let me do this let me Thank let you. me go to Queen because Queen is hanging Queen is out there you know she I'm Queen hanging listening out Queen, you Queen, right? Queen Queen <laughs> Queen I know you got some questions for for Queen. Star Rock so I'm gonna let Queen get out. I'm just taking over. <laughs> Okay. Hey. But uh, I know you got some yeah. questions, Queen. Well, to be honest with you, every question that I had has already been answered. So <laughs> I just have a few <laughs> things to say because every question yeah. I had written down <laughs> has already been answered. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, what was your capacity in law enforcement when you were in law enforcement? What were you were were you an officer? Yeah, um, 20 years in, in correction, 20 years. No and, correction. And let me tell you, Queen, and Queen, let me tell you, Texas is one of the largest prison systems in the world. So I work mm-hmm. with crazy, cra- crazy types of atmospheres. So my thing is that it wasn't until these last couple of years that people had begun to know who I was. And... Um, you know, because of social media, you know, I was able to hide it for a long time because I knew how to separate it. You know what I'm saying? My thing is that I always treat people fair but firm but follow the, the, the rules and I will always work for an agency that I knew that respected, you know, the uh, the laws of the citizens as well. You understand what I'm saying? That never would yeah. go against something that I that I would never do, you know, would never want, you know, because I got sons and and, and brothers and sisters, whatever. So I always, you know, going into the system, I chose a system that I know that was that was for the humans' rights and, and give them what they were supposed to have, and not. Yeah, Rock said, "Don't put her, don't put her in that category." 
No, no, no. I tell them, don't put you in that category. Don't get it, Mick. Don't get it twisted now. You talking law enforcement. I'm explaining it because I'm human rights first. I'm human rights first, (laughs) however, because I I come from that party, so I know. That's right. You know, but that was my plan B. I mean, even as a young adult, I always loved law enforcement. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I know that as a female, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my mother, you know, she, huh? No, but but I'm telling you, no, growing up in New York, I could have went crazy ways. There's many different ways that I could have went. You know what I'm saying? I could have been doing some crazy stuff because the environment was there. But one of the re- one of the things that I knew that I knew that being in law enforcement, I just was enthused. <laughs> uh, I love the law, but at the same time, I know that being a part of the law, I couldn't get in no trouble. You understand? Because you had to have a clean background. You had to do this and that. So law enforcement saved me because I could have, growing up in New York City, I could have went a different way because I was around all the craziness. But at the same time, being a law enforcement, I chose the agency that I know that was going to be fair to the, the people that were incarcerated and fair to me and fair to the system. That whatever the laws was, firm but fair. And that's, that's who I was. Okay. And so it wasn't right. until hey. I, I decided to retire early. Well, no, I didn't. I retired early, right? I could have kept going, but I was like, mm, I can't do this because they start telling my business. So I had to go. That's what I was gonna. Ask. That's what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> Listen to this. How did? How were you perceived? Once, but but I'm sure you were far removed from hip hop and all of that. But how was it? How were you perceived to people was, that knew you I, now that you were I law enforcement never, officer, like people you knew in the streets and all of that? With you know why? Because the thing is, is that they knew I was in law enforcement, but I never really told my my business. Because the thing is, is that, like I said, when you do stuff, you don't have to say to everybody, you don't have to, like, go out there and, and, and just, like, shout out to the world how you move. That's the problem that we have today. What's you know, real gangsters and all of that stuff, all that stuff is out the way. You, you move, you move in silence. You don't have to tell everybody right. that you, you know, real, real people move in silence. They just do what they got to do and move. But that right. lasting impression that you leave on somebody is what counts. It's your character, it's your morals, it's how you treat people as you want to be um, treated is what's going to carry you long, long way. Because I promise you, anybody that, that, that would run up to me on the street that has been, that has came across me in that system will say, you know what, Ms. Jackson is firm with Phil, but she don't play. If, if it's something that I got to have, she's going to make sure I got it. If it's something that I ain't supposed to have, she ain't going to give it to me under no mm. circumstances. Because Character and morals will take you a long way, and doing what you're supposed to do take you a long way. But if it's something that you know that's not right, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it because my character is what's gonna take me a long way, a longer way than anything. Because I knew I was Shah Rock. I knew I mm. was Shah Rock outside of the, outside of all of that. So no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Regardless of whether or not they didn't know it, I knew it. But I know how a person should be treated, you know. And so, yeah, I had to leave. I had I, I retired early because it, it was it was it, they they started it, it was that damn internet. You know what I'm saying? That once people <laughs> start seeing you know on TV this and that, and this, it was time for me to go because then now you put you put the agency in, in jeopardy. So yeah, right, it was right, time right. for me to go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, go ahead, also. Queen. Congratulations to you on your Thank Hip Hop you. Honorary Award in New York City in 2012. Mm-hmm. I um, salute you for including the funky, you know, including the funky four plus one. I salute yes, you for that because yes. you didn't just accept it for yourself. You were humble right. enough to include them in with that. So congratulations on that. Have you received any other awards since that yes, one? Yes, a lot. I, I received an award from Mayor de Blasio in New York City. Um, uh, when just last year the Women's Distinction Award I received for Girl, Queen, and Lou, guess what? The Bronx gave me my own day. So I have MC Shaw Rock oh, Day impressive. on June 1st. Right, on June 1st is MC Shaw Rock Day. They, they ordain that day as MC Shaw Rock Day. So this year, I wish y'all could come. I have people from all over yeah. the world coming because I'm celebrating it on June 6th. We're going to have a lot of different people coming over. It's not just about the Bronx. It's a multicultural, you know, um, festival where I just want people to come out, hear music. Roxanne Shantae is going to be there. Rod Digger is hosting it. You're going to have Busy B there. You're going to have a lot, Sparky D, a lot of people, old and new. 
So I want I want to That's sort of right. kind of bridge the gap with the with the new kids with the not the new kids but the young kids today. You know I have like a um, you know like a, a a segment where you got the new the, the new school. I don't even want to say new school, but like the, the up and coming. You know. MCs that's going to be out there today and they're going to be, I mean, that's out there today. They're going to be rhyming, rhyming. I got the old school. So I want to bridge the gap to show that, look, we could party together and we must respect, regardless of whether or not you don't like the person's music or you may think it's this and that, you still must respect their artistry, regardless whether or not you feel like it's artistry or not. You know what I'm saying? You still must respect because for me, I feel like everybody doesn't have to sound like a Shy Rock. Everybody doesn't have to sound like a Sugar Hill Gang. Uh, Sugar Hill Gang. Everybody doesn't have to sound, sound like Kumo D or, or, or Chuck B, you know, or KRS One, because um, just um, that's just one part of the element. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just have a problem when people say, "Well, hip hop, hip hop." If you're not celebrating, no, you don't have to be break dancing all over the floor, whatever. But if you're not celebrating all of the errors, you can't class rap music just hip hop general because it's more. Than, than um, rap music is more than hip hop, just rap music. But I do respect, you know, um, a person's artistry because that's that's them. You know what I'm saying? Just if you you rhyme or you rock a certain way, then that's that's you. If you one of those prolific MCs, you know, that's you. If you one of them people who they call mumble rappers, I don't even like label nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? Because my thing, that I don't like to put labels on nobody. That's just <laughs> you no know, for real. You know what? Well, I'm just real with it. That I don't like doing that because rap is just it's rap is just the good. element. Rap is just the element. Everybody you know, has their own. Um... Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I don't like doing that. I don't like doing that. And if people do that, that's them. I'm I'm not knocking you, but I I would never do it because that's just one element. It does not it does not justify hip hop. Who what hip hop is? You understand what I mean? Right, it's just right, one right. of the elements, hey. you know. And so. Hey. Hey, Sean, let me let me let me put this out there because you have your yeah. day out there. We would love to come. I would love to come to that event. So I'm gonna try to make it there. It's a um, free but event. we also to the public. yeah, and also yeah. check this out. We gotta give shout out props to our homeboy, our fallen homeboy from L.A., Nipsey Hustle. I've heard that he's yeah. being honored uh, there as well. So I'm glad you yeah, spoke no, on that. Nipsey Hustle give got his day Nip. on the same day I did, June 1st. We both got our day on the same day. So Nipsey Hustle, man, was a person who, like, before he passed away, God, I mean, that, that, oh, man, that hurt me to my core. You know, that was like one of the Michael Jackson moments. You know what I'm saying? When Michael Jackson passed away, I was like, you know, when Whitney Houston, Nipsey Hustle, man, was in, in a lane by himself. And I was listening to his music, like, because I, I stumbled upon his music. One day I was, like, on the Facebook or YouTube or something, something like that, way before, you know, the, the incident happened. And I stumbled upon his right. music, and I was like, yo. You know, so I was I was bumping, you know, some of his, his things, you know, especially, um, like, my son. He had, he was, he, like, he listened to old school, but he had Nipsey Hussle. So he started schooling me on a lot of, of, of Miss Nipsey's Hussle songs. So I used to rock, to, rock with his songs. Mm. So when I heard the incident, I was like, yo, that's like, but, you know, that I'm still hurt behind that. But the thing is, is that he did get a day. Uh, he got his day on June 1st in New York the same day I did. And he that's should. What's up. I don't in care. In New York. Yeah. That's big. In, in New, New York. York City. And, and you know what? Big. I don't care if it was New that's York. Big. I don't right. That's I don't big. care if it's New York. I don't care if it was wow. California. I don't care where it was. The thing is, is that yes, that man was on his way to assuring that his community and everybody around him. I mean, he just has such a wonderful, wonderful soul. I, it's, it's, yeah. I can't even explain it. So yes, it, all that New York, California stuff, man. Nipsey got his day in New York the same day I did, wow. and I'm happy to be honest. On the same day as Nipsey Hussle. Wow. That's what's up. Thank, it ain't about New York, ain't thank about the East that, Coast, West Coast, nothing. He was supposed to do that. And 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 look, That's and tough. on my day, I hope they celebrate him everywhere. Because on my on on the on in, in the Bronx, we're gonna be celebrating Nip, Nipsey Hussle too because that he got his day the same day I got mine. So shout out to L. A. Wow. Shout out to Nipsey. Shout out to his family, Lauren, uh, Lauren London, all of them. He deserved it. That's yes. what's up you right know, there, I Sha. To say, Big respect. Um, Go ahead, Queen. Yes. MC Light has publicly stated that you were one of her influencers, that you influenced yes. her a lot. 
And I think that's pretty dope. And then another thing, um, you and Lisa Lee did freestyling at the uh, B Street reunion. And, I mean, you yeah. guys were just like, act, I mean, you ladies were just freestyling. Like, it just flowed off. It's, that's why you know you're a naturalist. You're a therapist and you're the mother mic as stated. Yes, ma'am. Because Thank the way so that much. you were on that stage doing it, and I was like, wow, because I was watching it. What year was that? Thank you. Um, that was, what, about two years ago? Two years ago. Oh, two ago. years ago. I think yeah. that was about two years ago. Yeah, I think it was in... Still got it. Six, what, 16, you still 16? got it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, did you see that, Gilu? Did you see it? Yeah, she still got it. She, she still got it. Yeah, still got it. I was like, well, thank wow, you, that's Thank dope. you, I mean, you thank you. Yes, yeah, about, about two, three years ago. Yeah, uh-huh. Thank you so much. Okay. And also, like, guys, um, thank you, Queen. Also, they... Um, they gave me uh, on the New York City map, um, and, and I'm proud of this. And y'all, not, I'm not bragging, but I just want y'all to know is that you know, <laughs> e- even being you know in this old older days and and being recognized to the people who they don't know, maybe they heard, but New York City um, on the city of maps, you know, at their museum, they actually named the street stop you know, of me uh, on 174th Street in the Bronx by the number four train. So it's like on the street map, I have my own stop on on the New York City wow. man, tra- man uh you know transit so, maps and all that wow. stuff so I'm, I'm yeah. happy wow. about that. that's what wow, that's you big. should brag you that's know you big. should brag you should you, brag you're yes, bragging yes, with yes. humbleness you know yes. what I'm saying so you yes. you you have the you right to, to know brag that. because we know that you're humble with your bragging so yeah well, thank you I Put appreciate it, it I appreciate it I appreciate it yeah but you know you're what welcome, the thing girl. is I, I appreciate people like y'all who um you know, take the time, you know, to 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 get the truth, you know, and the studies, you know, about what really went down and listen to the voice of, of the people, you know, because you cannot believe everything. Because what, what they're doing now is that if I give an interview, like they do in Queen, I give an interview what they do. Some people, they'll go, like the writers, they'll go and they'll listen. They'll take down and jot down everything, you know, and all that stuff. But some people get it wrong or even like the MC, some of them, you know, they'll jot it down and they'll be acting like, okay, yeah, I was there. This is what happened because I was there. I was there. I was like, and I, and I, and I come at them and I'll be like, listen, out of respect, you can't take nothing from nobody else. If you, you wasn't, if you wasn't there, don't hold it like it's your, your, like you was actually there. And this is what pisses me off about these writers that they take the first person from, from the era and believe everything that they say instead of fact checking what they say to be true. No, everything I mm. say is true because I can prove it. But the thing is, is they want a story so far. I, it's one thing that I was listening to, um, I think about a couple of weeks ago, ago that I posted on my page, and it was something that Denzel Washington said. He was like, you know, um, the media is so quick to, to, um, to just put, they want to be first. Everybody want to be first, so they want to put out the story first without fact-checking, you know, the story to ensure that the story is really, like, legitimate. And that's the only problem mm-hmm. I have with, yeah, I appreciate media, don't get me wrong. I appreciate y'all. But the thing is that this is what you have to do. You know, so if I'm telling you something, then y'all be like, let me see if y'all like, lie. let me go back. You know, and see if she's telling the truth, you know, whatever. But, you know, you got, you got to fact check. So if I'm not going to never say nothing that's not true because I could prove everything that I say. You understand what I'm saying? Because I have the documentation to prove who I am and what I say is the truth. You know, and so mm. you may always have people come and say, well, she not first because I heard this person or I heard this person. I, heard her. but I tell them, so when they say that, then you break it down and you say, well, who's first? And then you try to ask them, okay, so what did they do? When did they do it? Do they got documentation? Can they prove it? Can they say, was they out there moving that crowd? Was they pushing that crowd forward? What did they do to separate themselves from Shah Rock as opposed to anybody else? And I promise you that they can't tell you anything different than what I've just told you. Hmm. I'm talking about from my hmm. era. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. That's so. right. Um, right. Um, Sha, let me ask you this. Um, what? Tell us about the plans about, because we spoke about this uh, throughout the interview, but tell us about this uh, this incredible movie that you're working on and that you have coming out so we can get the well, real story. Well, even though we've been talking for a minute, right, and so you think you got mm-hmm. everything, but y'all didn't really get everything. Y'all got something. So we, I want to basically try to let you know what was going on in New York City at that time in the 70s from a woman's perspective. perspective. And the crazy thing mm-hmm. about it is that I I had, I don't know if your audience know Dana Dane, 
you know, Tim the fella, but yes, Dana yes, Dane yes, wrote, yes, me and Dana yes. Dane wrote the script, you know, along with the, another, you know, young man. We wrote the script. So the thing is that I enlisted Dana Dane. It wasn't the fact that, you know, some people say, well, you know, he ain't from the Bronx, he ain't know. But see, Dana Dane is a good writer. If Dana Dane don't know, he gon he gon he came after me. He was like, Shaw, what about this? What about that? I don't know. You got to break it down. You got to do this. You got to do that. Tell me. I don't know. So he he learned, and and then he gave me such a good script. You know what I'm saying? And we worked on it together that we hope that we bring it to, um, you know, the audience in a way that they, they, they'll see what was going on from a woman's perspective in the 70s without it being watered down. You, you know what I'm saying? So right. now that the script is um, ready, you know, now I'm, you know, trying to locate a good director that's going to bring it to light. So I don't just put it out there to everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Because it's, 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 um, it, 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 it's, it's, um, you know, very close to me. So I don't want to make, mm-hmm. I don't want to just put it out to everybody because I don't want no one to water it down. I want to bring, mm-hmm. I want to bring the truth. Just like LA, you know, uh, you know, uh, Cuban M, they bought the truth of NWA. Shara wants to bring the truth too because people need to know how, how it went down. I don't know, um, you know, the story, you know, or whatever. I don't know. I know that people want to know at least most of the stuff that went down, you know, mm-hmm. in that, you know, in that era, what was going on in that era at the time, you know? So, right. That's and, what, um, that's what, um, you, t- you spoke about a movie. Can we expect, can we expect the book as well? Are you working on a so book? I did the book uh, in 2010. No? I did the book in 2010. Okay. Oh, okay. The book is out. Uh, okay. okay. I, when I did that book in 2010, it's, uh, 2010, it's on Amazon. It's on, um, put that out so, there. So, we, we, we skipped that then. Put that oh, out there, where they can okay. get that shit yeah. right now. So listen, I got audio. I got the audio version on Amazon, and also the book is on Amazon. I need Amazon. the audio. I'm going to okay, get the audio look, ASAP. I'm, I'm I need the audio it. one. I'm bringing it deeper in the movie because a lot of things that I didn't even put in the book that's in the movie. What's the name of the so, book? It's Luminary Icon. Luminary. Okay. okay. Luminary it's on Icon Amazon. on Amazon yeah, it's right on now. It's on Amazon and audio, and you can download it on, on audio on Amazon as well. And I had a young girl, a young MC named uh, uh, Therese Crowder. She did it, but her, uh, you know, MC name is At Last. So I had her did it because I wanted somebody else to narrate it, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I did it. So so in 2010, I did it. Meanwhile, I wrote the book while I was at, like, at, you know, in law enforcement. But I knew that I wanted mm-hmm. to do the movie. So I was going to always do the movie when I retired. I didn't want to do the movie while I was still, you know, in law enforcement. So, right. you know, everything for me was, was planned, you know, so I did, the, did it in 10 years, you know, I said getting close to, um, you know, me retiring, then I'll go ahead and start, you know, um, you know, getting, you know, the script and all that stuff ready, ready to go, you know, the cast and all that stuff. So, yes, but the book, but I'm coming stronger as okay. well in, in the movie, guys, you know, like tell you that, that, that truth, okay. you know, yes. Right. And, and tell the people, uh, where they can follow everything that you're doing right now, from the social media to maybe emails, anything you want the people to know where they can get at you or follow you or yeah, get at you for yeah. business or whatever. So, so, guys, listen, you know, what, I got like about 5,000, close to 5,000 followers on Instagram because I just Uh-oh. got, I had did Instagram, no, listen, I did Instagram about like three, three, three years ago, right? I, I, right? I had my daughter set it up for me three years ago. I was on Instagram for like two weeks and then I, I got off. And so it wasn't until like, what, about six or seven months ago that I got back on Instagram to, because I knew I was doing a movie. So the thing is, is that now everybody says, oh, you got to be on Instagram, you got to be on, you know, whatever. So I'm on Facebook more than I'm on Instagram. So I am, I am uh, MC Sharrock. That's Instagram. Y'all can follow me on there. I, you know, I post things there. Or, you know, I'm like uh, Sharon Jackson, MC Sharrock. I'm on um, Facebook. But let me explain to, to, to your audience. I never was a person who liked the term fan. So this is why I don't have a fan page. I don't know if I have to get one later, but I don't like fans. I like to do um, up close and personal stuff. No, I can't answer everybody, but I like to engage with people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't like, I don't like mm-hmm. the fan page. Yeah. So now I'm at the max or whatever, but people are still following. I don't know how that that happens, how much you can go over following, but you can still follow me. And if you write me a message, if, if I can get to it, I'll answer it, you know, one-on-one, you know, whatever. That's what I do. You know, and the thing is, is that, um, 
Facebook, you can find me. Instagram, I am MC Shyrock. Um, to email me, you know, if you plan on coming to MC Shyrock Day, you can email me at MC Shyrock Day, um, at MC Shyrock Day at gmail dot com, or you can email email me for business at MC Shyrock nineteen seventy six at gmail dot com. Mm, there it is. Yes, there it is. There you go, Queen Jean. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yes. Shyrock. Oh my God. Yo, I I'm looking hey, for you now he, on he, um, he Facebook. Broke the internet tonight. To <laughs> yes, I'm looking for you on Facebook you broke it, now. You broke G. Lou show. I'm sorry, Queen. Go ahead. Yes, it's a uh, great interview, Queen. Hey, great yo, interview. One, okay, one thing. One thing I I I I put on my Facebook and Instagram um, page today, guys, ladies, fellas, if you old enough, let listen. Whoever you believe in this year in November. Y'all got to get out there and vote. Make your vote count because it's critical. If it's never been critical this year, whatever, no vote is a vote for the person that you don't want in. So you got to do it, guys. Females, y'all got to do it. But who? But 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 Sha, but Sha, listen, you're from New York, so you got Bloomberg, but you're not in New York. But what do you think? My thing is this: we know we don't want Trump, but who do we have that like? Yeah, I'm sure you're seeing the, the the party right now, the 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 candidates that we have. Who in your who in, I mean, who do we vote for? <laughs> you know what? I ain't trying to it's tell nobody how it's to do great. it. Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna tell you this: <laughs> you gonna have to vote for somebody because <laughs> you gonna have to make that decision. Because a vote, regardless of who you feel is not the right one because they lack this, who you feel is the right one because they lack right, 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 you won't have to do something. So whatever yeah. person that you're going to have to do a process of, of elimination fast, because you already know what it is. Ain't nobody got to wait right. to December or, or, or November to say, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, I'm, I, you know, I'm away. Nah, you already see what it is. It ain't nothing going to change from now to November. You got to have your mind set up to say, I'm getting in. I'm going to do it. And this is who I'm going with. Because anything that they're saying is not going to change from now to November. So all your minds, you're talking about, I'm away, I'm away. I ain't got my mind made up. You better figure it out fast. Because what they're telling you is what they're telling you. Make your mind up now so you can be ready to go to that post. Because nothing's going to change from now to December. Unless somebody Mm -hmm. is no longer part of of you know of, of the presidential you know elections, but your candidates you already know what they stand for. Nothing's gonna change. Make your mind up and rock with it. Nothing's gonna change mm-hmm. from now to November. That part because they showing Shall you rock. who they are. What? Right, right. They are. They Ready. are. They are. I, was just, yeah, right? I just wanted to ask you that. To we got to vote regardless. We got to. I understand. I just I just had to play because you I know, know it's, I know. it's I tough know. right now. You know what you know, it is. Uh, uh, you know what it is. <laughs> but but guess what though? Right. You gonna have to make your choice, uh, uh, Lou. I'm gonna tell you why because nothing they saying is gonna be different than what they're saying in November. Mm-hmm. You already know what it is. Ain't nothing changing. That's they saying. That's how they feel. That's how they get down. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing's gonna change. So you are gonna have to decide so you'll be ready to ride out to them polls. That part. Right. Okay. That's I got part. you. Hey, and um, yeah. um, Chilu, you need to hey, get a rock. Me... You need to get a drop. Yeah, I was just about to ask you that, Queen. <laughs> Queen, please, please. Yeah, we got to get a drop, uh, Shot Rock, please, for the G Lu show before you leave. Before you leave us. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Oh, you talking about now? Oh, or, or you can send it however you want to do it. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't you know. I, I'll send you it to send you. Me I'll text it to you. <laughs> you okay, have to do cool. it on my phone cool, and text cool. it to you. <laughs> Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Because That'll I can be text you to the, the, that number, right? No, I got your number. Yeah, the number. I'll text it to you. You got my yeah. number, my personal number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got okay, that. I cool, got cool. that. I got that. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And check this out. In closing, Sha, because we got a few minutes left, tell the people what you want to leave them with in closing because we spoke about a lot of things. We Maybe, I don't know if we got to everything, but whatever we didn't speak on, whatever, whatever you want to leave the people with, please let them know now. Well, well, for everybody that's listening, you know, especially um, L.A. out there, I have much respect for you. I'll always have, always will, you know, and, and shout out to L.A. I just want everybody to be safe and love each other out there, the same as I say to New York and the Bronx. 
You know, we got to change the course the way we do things, even New York City, even all Chicago, you know, everything. We got to come together as one, you know, to try to figure out how we can um, change, change, change this world. And I know it may sound corny, but, yo, I just want to see it while I'm here. Um, on top of that, you know, MC Shot Rock Day is, is, is coming up. I want everybody to make sure, you know, that if they can come out, you know, I have, have people from, you know, a, you know, from uh, uh, Michigan, you know, all people f- coming all over. Much respect. Um, and let everybody know when they say uh, who's the first female MC of hip hop culture, y'all got y'all got everything. Y'all school them. You know, much respect to all the female MCs out there. L.A. is dope MCs that I respect so much. You know what I'm saying? From Yo-Yo, you know, to... Um, there's, there's a lot of them out there that I like. So much respect to L.A., much respect to, to New York, much respect to some major cities, all the cities. Let's just come together as one and make sure that we, we holding each other down and, and holding, you know, um, the, the youngest down. That's that's all I want to say, you know? That's what's up. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Shot Rock. Classic episode. I want to really thank you. I'm honored to have you here once again. Can't thank you enough. Thank it you. was just great. And I appreciate you joining us tonight. Queen G. Thank you so I know much. You wanna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I just want to I'm... say to you, um, blessings to your prosperity. Um, thank great you. show. And also you can check this show out that we just did, the interview that we just did on our YouTube page, the G Lou cool. um, YouTube page. So you can check it out. You can tell your friends, you know, those who didn't get a chance to tune in, they can go on to our YouTube page, like and subscribe, and check out the interview. So blessings to your prosperity, to your family. Thank and, you so much. You know, all of that, Queen. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. I'm pleasure. honored and respect to everybody that listened. I appreciate right. it. Hey, 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 and Sha, um, Jeff, the homie Jeff yeah. wanted me to tell you hello as well. Jeff Kwan, who made it happen. Yeah. He wanted me all to right. Love. Tell him I love. said hello and thanks for everything. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sha Rock. And um, um, again, what we got going on now? Because I know you back out here shaking and moving and making moves. Do we got anything we could look forward to besides the movie? Like you coming out? Well, you know, we got the day coming up. But do you have anything else going on you want to let the people know? Well, about? basically, you know, I'm just going around, you know, to the college tours and and all that stuff. You know, I'm in uh, of uh, Houston um, Monday. You know, and um, I'll be headed to North Carolina, and then I'll be headed, you know, um, to what back to New York, you know, to try to make sure that everything is, is secure, you know, for MC Shock Rock Day and, you know, just going around to the different universities and all that stuff and you know, just giving it the information besides making sure that the Luminary Icon movie comes to fruition. So that that's one of my focuses right now, you know? Okay. And all of my main be here in North Carolina. Oh, okay. oh I'll be there on the the eighth the the Uh-oh. ninth. Uh oh. The ninth of what month? April night. Will you? Why you go into North Carolina? I live in Charlotte, North Carolina now. Oh, I'll be in Wilmington. Okay, then I'm I'll just giving you my information. I'll I'll inbox you my personal yes. information through Instagram. Okay, great, great. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so no, much. Thank you. I appreciate. It. We're gonna we're gonna stay in touch. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank Most you definitely. so much. But That's thank you guys. Thank you so much. I'm coughing. I'm trying okay. to get sick again, but I got to get rid of it. <laughs> but listen, thank you so much. Thank you for your listeners. I appreciate it. Shout out to everybody that that's on the phone. Even if y'all have one on their line and they, y'all gonna listen to it, I appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful evening, and please, everybody, be safe out there. Okay. And same to yeah, you. Poor. Thank you. Thanks, thank Queen. you, Sha. Bye, Lou. See you What's later. Up? Okay. Right. Peace, peace and love. Peace. Peace. peace and love. Bye. We love you. Hey, the I legendary shout. All right, peace, peace. The legendary MC Shout Rock, Funky Four Plus One. Let me do it like this right here. And we'll be right back. If you're ready for this, say you're ready for this. If you're ready I gotta for take this. you back. Last back Friday. Are you ready for this? We're ready for this. Are you ready for this? We're ready for this. What we just can't miss. We just can't miss. What we just can't miss. With a beat like this. It's the joint. We're gonna prove to the world that we're for real. We're gonna prove to everybody.
debate. Stop, rock, rock, stuck in the hole, don't play. And now here's a little story. You got to be told. The party people in the place got a whole lot of soul. So when we're on the mic, y'all stuck in the house. And when we all get together, we can turn it out. Now we're in the house, that you can plainly see. Everybody say, get funky, get funky, and make money, and make money, and you don't stop. But give it to us now. Keep on. If you like the beat and you want some more, scream. 
to make love to the judge of female And I'm down with the crew from off the hill Now I just walk through my door, your pose on the floor First thing I touch is hips to lock And I just move right off Kiss your lips, hold on tight so I never slip And I tongue you down onto the ground If any love is there, it will be found About the man you all can tell I rock well to the depth of hell And every time you hear my name, girl, it brings your bell We are now in the after hours of the G Loop Show Flashback Fridays. And uh, before we continue, I want to send some love out. Oh, yeah, you hear that, Marvin, back there. It's not OG Sundays, it's Flashback Fridays. But check this out. I want to give some love out there to our loved one and sponsor of this show, Miss Dee Dee Harrison. We want to send some love out to you, let you know our prayers are with you. We got much love for you and um, all of that right there. Much love to Didi Harrison. Shout out to our sponsors, BTP Media Group, 93.3 Tweet FM Ism. Shout out to Mama Boo Boo on YouTube. Intimate Talk with Mama Boo. Follow her on YouTube as well. I want to send a shout out to the G Lu Show podcast. We have a new episode coming up this Saturday. Queen, tell them about that. We have a new episode coming up Saturday with. Cree Cree. Cree Cree. Cali Cree. Cree Cree, yes, with the prolific From that Cree Athens. Cree. From <laughs> Athens, yes. And I'm excited to uh, tune in on that, um, especially because he's talking about Pyre Rouge. You know, I'm just so more familiar. <laughs> Centennial. With that, um, <laughs> Centennial that side of the, uh, Yeah, that side <laughs> of the spectrum, you know, like Parmalee, 134th, all that area, Pyre Rouge Street, so... Um, I'm looking forward to that. And also, um, I spoke with Dee Dee last night, and um, she wanted to tell everybody thank you for the prayers. Um, she loved us, and we're her newfound family, so we have to keep praying for her because she is having a hard time right now um, with this. So let's definitely keep her in prayer and also with the rest of her family. But she yes, wanted yes, to just yes. let everyone know that. So it was good hearing her voice. We love you, Dee. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey, that's hey, about Queen. it. Yet, yeah. I wanted. I wanted to send a special shout out to everybody out there who prayed for me. Uh, uh, for my stepmother. Uh, she's doing better now. She she came home. That she she's going home today. So uh, I just want to send thanks to everybody who prayed for. Uh, for me as well and my um extended family. You know, so uh we awesome. much love to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is that is awesome. That's that's you know, that goes to show you for those uh of of whoever may give up on the power of prayer because things are not happening after you pray, it's soon after. It's a process of prayer and prayer. Right. And if you're a believer in prayer, the the word says where two or more are gathered in my name, I am present. I'm there. So that means that I'm hearing the prayers. Prayers are very powerful. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's a wonderful praise report that um, Miss mm-hmm. Kay is coming home. And let's continue to pray for Miss Kay because it's still a recovery process. Yeah, so. Part. Yes, so let's yes, continue yes. to pray for Miss K, everyone. Yes. But that's an awesome you, thing you. that she gets to go home. Yes, it is. Well, she it should is, be home is. now, huh? Yes, yeah, she is home. So, so, so again, thank yes. you everybody for your prayers and uh, thank you, Queen, for that, for for those great words right there, man. Um, it's the G Lou show, and um, this show right here is for the people, you know. And um, I want to thank man, just this episode tonight was classic. I was happy. I was excited. To uh, get uh, Sha Rock, you know, she's a legend. You know, the first, she she, she is hip-hop. That's the original. Yes. And it's a lady. The and it's a lady. Mother of the mic. So, mother of man, the mic. Man, that was just, 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 <laughs> just, just, wow. You know, this yeah. took us to an, another another milestone on the G-Lu show. You know, and I'm glad to be uh, 
here to you know because this is for the people again and it's for me because you know it's just it's just all love and um so we made history again tonight thank you everybody who joined us and, and listen you know like queen said go to the youtube page subscribe like subscribe uh get the youtube page up and uh we have the podcast as well that's now everywhere as well spotify apple everywhere you know we got cali creek amazon. coming up this weekend i mean amazon, amazon. Everywhere. Yeah, apple iTunes. Yeah. Everywhere you can find podcasts, we there. And uh, we got yes. on the ninth episode, we got Cree Cree from Athens. You know, you heard Mama Boo's story. This the big homie right here, Cree Cree, and Cree Cree has been through a lot. You know, um, federal prison time. You know, he 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 comes from the Athens area back in the day. He he has a crazy story, and um, he's now an author. He he authored a book, Pyro Love. I think he has another book as well. So. It's going to be an incredible story on the G. Lou Show podcast. Go check out all the previous episodes, starting with Queen Jean, Dee Dee, Mama Boo, Hank, uh, Arabian Prince, Big U, uh, so Stan. many, uh, Stan, the homie G. Stan. Hey, go check out the podcast. But new episode this Saturday, tomorrow night, the homie Cree Cree from Athens Park, you know, uh, so it's going to be big, you know, um, but we're in the after hours. I want to uh, give a music. shout out before oh, boy, before you get into the music of the after hours. I want to give a shout out to Mama Boo. Um, as Mama well. Boo. I yeah. I just want you to know if you're Baby listening. Boo. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the love that you send me and adopted me as your auntie. That means more to me than you would ever know. That means I'm doing something right. And today when you sent me those hugs when I said, I don't just want a hug, I need one, and you gave me all those hugs, I received those and it did help. You know, just knowing that someone is listening and not just looking at my pictures but looking at the caption and giving me that. So thank you, Mama Boo. Mama now, if you Boo. want to play that, continue to play that Marvin Gaye, that would be swell, even though Uh-oh. it's not. Look at you. Um, even though it ain't OG Sundays. <laughs> It ain't OG yeah, Sundays, that, Queen, but yeah, I had to tease but, him a little bit. You know, Marvin, please believe yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> that that, that would just be smooth, yeah. I mean, you could go that into was, the uh, raw, rawness after that, but, you know, you you know, you know, put that out there, so. <laughs> all right, Queen. All right, all right, all right. Marvin Gaye. Thank you. Marvin Gaye. Queen Jean, G. Lou, we in the after hours. This is the G. Lou show right here, man. And if you're privy... And blessed enough to be right here with us right now. Don't go anywhere. I'm just gonna get real. Marvin, talk to me, I'm a... See all the fiction too. Yes, I'd forget it all. Once in bed with you. Oh darling, how could we end up like this? Oh baby, let me Love you. Think of you with pride and keep you satisfied. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Ooh. Ooh, wait, this is old.
It's too late for you and me It's too late for you and I Much too late for you to cry It's too late for you and me Much too late for you and I It's too late for you and me Much too late for you to cry, baby We tried, God knows we tried. Now it's too late right. to live and love and mm. It's too late, baby. Gaye, it's too baby. late for you and me. Much too late for you to cry. Hey, that's Marvin Gaye, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is Ladies Love Cool James. Ladies. Yeah, I got to do it. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall and in the back of my mind I hear my conscience call telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove for the first time in my life. I see I need love. There I was, giggling about the games that I had played with many hearts and I'm not saying no names. Then the thought occurred, tear drops made my eyes burn because I said to myself, look what you've done to her. I can feel it inside. I can't explain how it feels. All I know is that I'm never dishing of the raw deal, playing make-believe, pretending that I'm true. Holding in my laugh as I say that I love you Saying I'm more, kissing you on the ear Whispering I love you and I'll always be here Although I often reminisce, I can't believe that I found A desire for true love floating around Inside my soul, because my soul is cold One half of me deserves to be this way till I'm old But the other half needs affection and joy And the warmth that is created by a girl and a boy I need love I mean, I've changed. 
changed, I'm no longer a playboy on the run. I need something that's stronger. Friendship, trust, honor, respect, admiration. This whole experience has been such a revelation. It's taught me love and how to be a real man. To always be considerate and do all I can. Protect you, you're my lady and you mean so much. My body tingles all over from the slightest touch of your hand. And understand, I'll be frozen in time. Till we meet face to face and you tell me you're mine. If I find you, girl, I swear I'll be a good man. I'm not gonna leave it in destiny's hands. I can't sit and wait for my princess to arrive. I gotta struggle and fight to keep my dream alive. I search the whole world for that special girl. When I finally find you, watch I love her unfurl. I need love. Attention all ladies, the candy man is on the prowl, and for those that want to get busy, you got to speak up now. This one, this time, it's one of a kind, blowing your mind like only the candy man can. Like a heavyweight champion, knocking them out, another bow without a doubt. Once again, you can scream and shout, when I rock the bells, yell out my name. This is what you've been missing. Listen to my heartbeat while I'm whispering. I know you're suffering. So sweet, a candy man, sweet nothing. Hugging and tugging and rubbing, loving it all, having a ball. All y'all girlies next to me, talking sex to me. We can't do that yet, but I bet we'll chill. Candy man, tell them the truth. We'll still end up knocking the boots. Ooh, boy, I love you so. Never, ever, ever gonna let you go. Once I get my hands on you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Flashback Friday.
just want to give a shout out, I guess, to everybody, man. Thanks for tuning in, man. Respect that G. Lou show. You know what I'm saying? It's a thing that's happening right now. It's the most popular thing on the radio. So tune in, listen in, log in, call in. It don't matter. Just make sure you're in the car. And uh, much love to you, G. Lou, for, you know, allowing me to be here and sit at this damn long table. You know what I'm saying? That part right there. That... That part right there. Shout out to my boy Snow. Skip, skip towing Westside Car Club. Let me go to the phone lines and check in with a loved one of the show and my brother, the Reverend Ali. Hello. Hello, hello. G. Lewis. I'm calling into the G. Lewis show, man. <laughs> you know. I'll take it up. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Yeah, I'm taking it in for uh, Uncle Larry, man. <laughs> okay, okay. What up, loved one? Oh, man, I sit up here just chilling, man, listening to, you know, Friday be a rough, rough day for me. I be having a lot of dogs, cats, and rabbits to get to, man, if I want to get them chippers. You know, I got too many cars I got to go pay for. You know, some of them be going into the shop, and they just be sitting. I drive them, like, twice a week, and then, and then they go out on me, man, I got to pay Seven hundred dollars, you know, just to get whatever fix, man. It's a cold game. <laughs> it's a cold game, man, man. Ain't it, man? Man, I'm like, woo, boy. I be like, man. I told you, I got five cars, man. I got five bills, man. I didn't make cars cost a lot to keep them rolling, man. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Man, I'm telling. Man, I went. Hey, Yo. G. I went to this. Uh, I went to this shop today, man. It was a Ford shop, right? Ford dealership. Right. Man, but it looked like it was built in 1970, man. So you know they know how to fix on Thunderbirds, man. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I was telling them, man, please don't don't change nothing, man. I, when you go in there, G Lou, you can feel all the ancestors, man. You can just like, woo. You know they know how to wow. fix the car, man. Right, right. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey, 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 Ali, Ali. Ali, let me ask you this: How did you, uh, how did you like the show tonight, man? You know we had the legendary first female of hip hop, man, Shy Rock, Beat Street, and all that, man. How did you feel well, you that know, tonight, I, Ali? Well, I, I, I listened to her a little bit, you know. Um, and uh, hey, like I said, man, you know, she's still around. That's that's the main thing. Everything else don't mean nothing. She's still here. You know what right. I mean? So you know right, whatever right. she's saying, whatever she's saying, whatever she trying to do, or whatever's going on with her, you know, she's still here, you know. So uh, right. she out there, and she and she might be still listening. Hey, sister, you know what I'm saying? You keep your head up, you know. Life is the real bag. Everything else don't that mean part. nothing. I forgot I had Queen here. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. Queen yeah, Jean, I love Queen Jean. Yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry, hug, Queen. Hug Queen Jean. <laughs> no one. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you, Ali. I, I needed those hugs. I appreciate those hugs. I really wish that those arms can reach all the way out here, literally, and wrap. Oh, yeah, you know. But well, I'll, you. I'll, take the, I'll take the virtual one. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been hugging every day. I've been hugging every day. Like I've been hugging every day. Yeah, I know. Way, all the way over here. What you said, G. Lou? Saying, Ali? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was born... When I was born, a, la- a lady walked into the hospital and gave my mama a pink octopus and told her to hang it in my wo- in my room from the ceiling, man. So I guess I got arms to reach, wow. man, for real, man. You know, oh, I was born man. in California. Yeah. I, That's why you I was love, born man. in California Hospital. I was born in California Hospital right there on Hope Street, downtown L.A., man. I know exactly oh, man. Not where it is. No, California Not Hospital. Okay, okay. California okay. Hospital, okay. yeah. Yeah, we used to yeah, take a lot man. of USC students there. Yeah, man. They have. Yeah, no, nah, but you know, hey, that's the most high. You know, I've been hugging like ever since the most high. I say, I, you know, hug Ali. And I've been hugging and I right. take those pictures. My, I take those pictures myself. You know what I mean? I got a, I got a Nikon and I be out there strapping, right. man. You know what I <laughs> mean? I like, man. So I'm serious, but I be going all kinds of places. I just jump out. People be like, Ali, what you looking at? They don't see me. like, you be doing like slave, huh? Remember the song yeah. Slave? I wanna snap you. Snap you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> man. 
Yeah, man, you know, the, the place be looking all ugly and crazy. They be, Adi, what you doing, man? And I get out, I snap a picture, come back and show me. like, wow, I would have never saw that. Most high be showing me all kind of stuff, man. You know, it don't matter where it is. I can find a ribbon in the sky for sure. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, I don't know if Stevie Wonder. This, this Friday, this ain't Sunday, man. Don't make me play Stevie. Oh, now. man, go ahead. Stop. Go ahead and play Stevie, man. You know what I'm saying? I All request right, that in the spirit. I didn't even know it was coming. You know, it just blurted <laughs> out. <laughs> right. They not, yeah. We can't, we can't yeah, give it the, all to them, man. Yeah, but the shy rock, yeah, keep doing your thing. Just, you know, like I said, you know, life, life itself life. is a bigger bag than anything. Because if you ain't here to spend nothing, you ain't got nothing mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, keep your life. Eat some asparagus raw. You know, rinse them off, and, and you can put some olive oil on it and chew them raw, man, to clean your arteries out. That's one of the, the fastest, best ways go. to clean and clean your arteries, man, asparagus. Don't cook them. Don't, don't, don't braise them. Don't bake them. You know, Eat put them, them in raw. some water. Eat them raw, man, and that's how you clear your arteries, man, help you from stop having strokes and heart attacks. Okay, that's the health Asparagus tip from Rev Ali. Asparagus, yeah. man, that, it ain't good. Don't lie to him, but it's good for you. It but is. it ain't good. <laughs> and I remember Asparagus. my mom used to try to, hey, my mom, hey, back in the day when I was a kid, my mom used to put them little asparagus on the side and, you know, with the meal, and, you know, you got to eat it and shit. And, and, man, I used to sneak that under yeah. the table in the napkin, in the napkin. Oh, man. I know what you mean. You know, I used to do the same thing. But let me tell you something. You can dip them. You can rinse them <laughs> off. Dip, <laughs> rinse them off. Dip them, dip them in that olive oil. And then you can take some garlic some garlic salt or some garlic powder or onion powder and, and sprinkle that on there, man. They got this new thing at Trader Joe's called Mushrooms and Company. You know, go okay. get you some of that. And uh, Trader you can, Joe's. You can sprinkle some. Trim yeah. Mushrooms and Company. Oh, okay, yeah. it's in a shaker bottle. Yes, yeah, a little shaker bottle, multi-purpose. You know what I'm saying? You can't lose. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, you mommy. That's what they call it, you mommy. And you can go in and sprinkle mm-hmm. some of that on there with a little olive oil and eat them asparagus, man. I'm telling you, don't cook them. Eat them raw and, and put that mm-hmm. stuff on there so it tastes good for you. Yeah. Put that stuff on it, too. Make sure you put that stuff on it. Rev Ali. <laughs> <laughs> My man, Rev Ali. <laughs> I'm the S D by way of LA. Queen Jean G Lou. And this is after our slash So experience. check it out, y'all. You are listening to the G Lou show. Queen. And this is DJ Clientele. It's hot, it's happening, it's popping. Tune in and you're gonna get a treat every single time. Word up. Man, y'all know what we do. We killing with G Lo. We stay up one like stay Seattle. Go for the first one, for the break and fake, like DJ. G Lou on the one and two. There it is, DJ. You been crying, me, G Lou. You been crying, me, bro. Shout out to the homie Merc, Merc Dog, and all the say yo, uh, they getting that motherfucker wet. We can switch it back to the food. Last Black Fridays on the G Lee Show. This is the after hours. Yeah. 
Sundays, Flashback Fridays. We're cruising with G. Lou, Fabulous, Lowrider Roadies. So just let me introduce myself. I'm Tweet Cadillac, baby. I drink up all the Hennessy you got on your shelf. We got to keep it fly, P.I., and you know why. Yeah, I'm sorry. 